NASCAR history runs deep in Richmond. Richmond Benny wins the Richmond 500. And this track, yeah, this one is known for being action packed. Into the wall. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Sometimes you just get it. Keselowski wins. And it's awesome. And well, sometimes you don't. So who can solve this short track mystery today? Find out next with NASCAR on Fox. Welcome to Richmond and the Toyota Owners 400 on Fox. Three quarters of a mile, but so difficult, so tricky. And for this season, look at the winningest drivers of 2020. 25 wins among them, and look at that goose egg. That is the total of wins of Keselowski, Elliott, Hamlin, and Harvick so far this year. You would have gotten long odds on that happening this deep in the season, but here we are at a track that has been proven to be very difficult to understand and even more difficult to overcome. This is a place of surprises and question marks. Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer. Mike, this place is a mystery. I, I've never been to a racetrack throughout my career that was so hit or miss. One time you show up there, you've got the place figured out, all your marks, race cars working perfect. Maybe you go to victory lane or get a great finish. The next time you come back, say, let's just put the same setup in. No, it doesn't work. There's just something about how you break into these corners and how you set that nose on those front springs that is so difficult to do consistently, not just lap to lap, but each time you come back here race to race. Spot on, Jeff. More than any place, you go back and you start thinking about when you go to these racetracks, all right, what do I need to hit? What, what were the points? When I won there last, how did I do that? And you just get out there and really struggle to duplicate what you were doing, finding that grip, making that baby turn, rolling the middle. Both ends of this racetrack, drastically different, very, very difficult to get a hold of. It's partly unrepeatable because it's unpredictable. We race here at night then, we race here in the day. We have a ton of caution flags. We have no caution flags, but the stage breaks. You just never know. All right, Dial Tone, who you got? I got Brad <laughs> K. Let's get him on here. Hey, Brad K. It's boy or Gordon up at the booth. You got us? Yeah, what's up, Clint? Man, you hopefully <laughs> top tens the last five times here. Got beat up a little bit last weekend in Martinsville, but uh, starting 20th because of that. What's your plan? How are you going to get up there and compete for the win? Yeah, got a lot of cars to pass, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, last year we started 10th, and we got up in the top two or three there in a few laps. So we got a good shot of just, you know, being smart. Got to keep the fenders on it. 400 laps is a long time, and work our way up there, Clint. All right, buddy. We'll be watching. Good luck. Make sure you get your pit road speed dialed in here. It's going to be important. No mistakes today. Clean them up. Good luck, buddy. Thanks, bud. <laughs> Brad will roll off 20th today. Here is today's Toyota starting grid. It's a tall Toyota front row. Between Martin Truex and Denny Hamlin are five Richmond victories. Chase Elliott has been a runner up here and William Byron top 10 the last six races, both in Chevys. Yeah, Joey Logano, two time Richmond winner, starting fifth alongside him. 2017 Richmond winner, Kyle Larson. Row four right here, we got Christopher Bell. I look for him to make some noise today, I really do. And Ryan Blaney was bad fast last weekend. I look for a little bit of redemption out of him. Row number five has nine Richmond victories between them, Harvick and Bush. Let's check in with our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Well, Mike, if you think it's a mystery for the drivers, you ought to be one of those crew chiefs. All the things they have to think about, think about adjustments, they have to think about when to make that green flag stop. The driver can help me, though. Let's go to our Ford Performance car. One of the adjustments the driver can make is brake bias. He can go front to rear. Also, though, he can adjust left to right. These are things that driver can do, Regan Smith, that can help that car until the next pit stop. Larry, it's been unseasonably quiet for Kyle Busch so far this year. That's the bad news for him. The good news is Richmond, perhaps one of his best race tracks. Runner up yesterday in the Truck Series race. 30 career starts here. Average finish is 6.8. Look for him to make some noise today. Jamie? Well, Ryan Blaney's coming off one of his best performances of the year last week at Martinsville. Now he finds himself at his worst racetrack, his best finish here. 17th. So how are they going to improve on that? Well, his crew chief Todd Gordon put Brad Keselowski's exact same setup on this 12 car and said he just has to figure out how to drive it today. Mike? 
Thanks, Jamie, as we get ready to go here in Richmond, the 2021 Toyota Camry TRD. It's going to make that hard left turn to pit road. First stage, 80 laps with a competition caution at lap 30. The pace car is in. Truex, Hamlin, lead them to the line. Green flag, we're underway. What happened to Hamlin? What, yeah, what happened what? to Hamlin? What happened, then what happened to Logano down to turn one? I think the same thing, Jeff. Grip level just didn't have those tires cleaned up. We've seen that a lot here at Richmond. Coming right back to you, looking inside, just looking. Well, Hamlin recovers for third behind Truex and Elliott. Could he have missed a shift coming to green? Yeah, it's definitely possible there, Mike, and we'll, we'll have to get some radio communication. Boy, that could ruin your day right from the beginning if that's the case. I think he just spun the tires. Well, but that can. I, I, you're right. He did spin the tires the way I saw it. But a lot of times, you know, Jeff, you're trying to backpedal, trying to get that grip back underneath of you. Oh, the same time you're trying to shift the gear, that can, can play into that. So maybe a bit of both. Sixth place. Harvick and Byron as Justin Haley coasts into his pit stall. No drive. When you come to a track like Richmond, long runs, we all know long runs are important. So because of that air pressure, Jeff, you really want to, you know, start with low, low air. That falls into what you were seeing with cars slipping and sliding around. No practice plays into that. I mean, this is cold turkey, fresh start for a lot of them. Well, and, and we're, you know, we're trying, we're, listen, there's a lot of science that goes into these teams and they do an amazing job engineering out the, 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 you know, splitter heights and all those things. But man, if you miss it the slightest bit, it's very easy to get behind here early in this first run. Denny Hamlin back up to where he started. Let's go back to the start and have another look at this. Control car is Truex. You got to remember he's reacting off of the pole center Martin Truex when he leaves. And, and I just wonder if maybe he wasn't just a little bit late to the gas. You hear it spinning? And, yeah. He's yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear any, any no, shit yeah. there. Yeah. I, I think he just didn't quite anticipate. <laughs> I love that shot of yeah, the guy going to the racetrack. But uh, I, I just think he, he, he missed on the anticipation of the restart. And then what that does is make you squeeze in that throttle a little bit harder and spin those tires up. Well, you're just such at a disadvantage in that situation because, again, you're responding, you're reacting to that pole sitter leaving, and then all of a sudden you get on the gas too much. And once they start spinning, you can't get it back underneath of you. Well, I'm very curious to see. We talked about long Long run speed, short run speed. Here's Chase Elliott starting to go backwards right now. Is this car going away or is it going to come to him later? And it falls oh. right back into the mystery that we were talking about in that conversation leading into this race. It's all about the front tires, the load that you get through those things. These cars, for whatever reason, they don't want to change directions and roll that middle of the corner very well at this racetrack. Very, very challenging as a driver in that car to work your brakes, Clear. work your throttle, get that car to turn through the middle. And right now, the 300 cars that started furthest to the front are all running behind the positions where they started. They've all lost spots on the short run. I can see that this nine of Chase Elliott's tight. You can tell that because he's already trying to move up, Jeff, open this racetrack up, make it bigger to where he's not pulling on the wheel and make that thing turn. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was going to. That you guess on the setup, you know, based on the last time you were here and hope that you hit it right. But man, you know, it just seems to me like it's real easy to get the balance off like what we're seeing here out of Chase Elliott, although he has found something up top now. Is he going to be able to make that tight race car work to his advantage maybe by moving around? Jamie? Well, Chase Elliott had a pretty decent run here last year. He finished fifth. They were really good on the long run, but wanted to be better on the short run. So Alan Gustafson told me they're trying something new here with setup to try to find somewhere in the middle. A little bit better on the short run, but it would hurt him on the long run. We'll see if it plays out. Well, it certainly play out if you get some cautions and, and, and that help. But speaking of caution, you got a competition caution coming at lap 30. That'll help him, and he'll make some, just, uh, some adjustments there. You know, guys, when you look at Ryan Blaney, that 12 car that was racing with Chase Elliott, really anxious to see how Ryan was going to run here. He has never even had a top 15 finish. I talked to one of his engineers this week, and they said they are totally just puzzled as to why they can't give Ryan what he's looking for at this three-quarter mile track. 
Yeah, that's incredible, Larry. Nine starts and not a single so top 15 finish. Still out there to one, so there. Brad Kozlowski has now picked up five positions from where he started 13 laps ago. Well, I'm, I'm anticipating a lot of adjustments on oh, pit yeah. road. Some some wedge adjustments, air pressure adjustments, maybe even some some height adjustments with some Packer. Martin Truex out front. Ryan Blaney taking over fourth from Chase Elliott. Truex, the leader. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by McDonald's. 20 laps complete. Martin Truex still your leader. Denny Hamlin second. Ryan Blaney has taken third from Joey Logano. Chase Elliott completes the top five. Uh, Justin Haley, who coasted into the pits earlier, has now gone to the garage. And we got five cars already one lap down with the cop caution coming nine laps from now, Regan. Well, you see Kyle Bush there running behind Brad Kozlowski right now. Lost four positions since the start of the race. Kyle fighting a race car that's very loose off the corners. Feels like he's on ice. He's also chattering the front tires in the middle. That means that the front tires won't grip when he wants it to turn. That is a very, very tricky situation to fix, too, Jeff. That's not what you want to feel in a race uh, race car when you get in. If it's tight in the middle, broke up like that, loose on the ends, tight in the middle, hard thing to over uh, to I, adjust on. I always say pick your poison. If you, yeah. know, you need that crew chief to ask you some questions of what do you want me to fix first, because I can't fix it all. But that's not fair. They always ask you that. So which one's hurting you the worst? Well, one's going to make the other one worse. So <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. There is no right answer. I want to know what is it doing first. Let me work <laughs> on that first. It's a good point. You got to get in the corner first, right? Traffic has allowed Elliott to scoot away from Harvick. That is the uh, fifth place battle. And behind them, they're all kind of stacked up like car cordwood. Larson, Bell, Byron, and Dillon. All in one, pretty much one pack. 
One thing I noticed here with the leaders as they caught that lap traffic, Denny Hamlin was actually catching him, Jeff. And at this racetrack, more than any place, it's so important when you catch him with just the least amount of, of momentum to capitalize on it because it seems like there's a bubble there. Once you match their speed and don't get to the inside or the outside of them and get in position, you lose it. It's a great story this week on Austin Dillon where he said that this used to be the track that he most feared coming to and now it's his most favorite racetrack in the world. Well and, and that's what I talked about in our opening about this place being a mystery but man when you do find something whether it's a setup or something you're doing as a driver and you can repeat it this place will reward you and it has been rewarding the driver this number three car Austin Dillon for you know the last several times they've been here so they found something and it seems to be repeatable and that's why we're seeing that three move forward. Jamie. Regan excuse me. Well Jeff you talk about the three car and Austin Dillon when they found what they found was actually in 2017 they had the opportunity to tire test here. Justin Alexander his crew chief said ever since that day we have been spot on at this racetrack and his eyes lit up this morning too when I talked to him about this racetrack they were very pumped. Top six in three of the last four races here. Top six finish. I'd put him at more than a 60 to one shot. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that, That's where you want to put your money is on a long shot like that. Tell you what, we don't see not a lot of testing anymore. So those Goodyear tire tests and when they get those opportunities, boy, you better make take advantage of it. And it sounds to me like Austin Dillon, that team certainly did that in that tire test here in Richmond. So the competition caution coming next time by Garrett Smithley is in the free pass position. He's been having a side by side battle with his teammate uh, for that spot. Josh Balicki. 13th here Kyle Busch moving ahead of uh, Bubba Wallace. There's the Tubi cam on board Kurt Busch and the caution is out. Thirty laps complete competition yellow and Anthony Alfredo gets the free pass unofficially. Would you like to win some money. And yes not the, not you you got any money oh. left? it's mine <laughs> <laughs> you still have time to enter Clint stage two contest for a chance to win your share of the ten thousand dollar guaranteed prize download the Fox Bet Super Six app for free answer six questions about stage two to win Clint's money and here they are oh, I think that's going to be uh, doable for some a take it all to take so all your money clean out my <laughs> bank account right there get all ten thousand dollars Fox Bank get on there still time stage two you're going to have enough uh, for gas for the plane to ride home I'm, I'm a bummer ride <laughs> Larry what do you do here well, if you don't come and get four, you will be part of the put it out in the pre race <laughs> next week. All right, Regan. Well, Mike, you guys just talked about the driver needing to pick one thing to fix. That's exactly what Kevin Harvick did. He said, I am too tight in the middle. That's what I need you to fix first for me to crew chief Rodney Childers. And on the right of the screen, Joey Logano, that race car took him about 10 laps to come in, fighting rear grip right now. Jamie? Denny Hamlin in the 11 said he's a little bit tight in three and four. Good on entry, though. Pretty happy with this car overall. The 12 of Ryan Blaney wants to be tightened up a bit on entry. Three, turn three is pretty decent. So overall, pretty happy there as well. And the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. Chassis adjustment, fuel, four tires. Here's the Ram race off pit road, and Denny Hamlin will take the lead from his Joe Gibbs Toyota teammate. Dylan, Byron, Bell, Kozlowski, Reddick all make gains. 30 green laps and then the competition caution. We are racing at Richmond.
Fox NASCAR is sponsored by the all new Bronco Sport. Built wild. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Under caution at the completion of the competition caution, your Ford Performance Track Facts. Ford has 30 wins at Richmond, beginning with Paul Goldsmith in 1957. Brad Keselowski in the one race they had there here last year went to victory lane. So how did Denny Hamlin beat Martin Truex on that pit stop? Look under crew wow. and you'll see by a full second. 11-9. That is getting it done right there. And it plays right into what we were talking about at the top of the show. The importance of pit road right here. You saw it right there firsthand. Put him in the lead. Now he's got the track position. Yeah. Now he won't be the one spinning the tires because of a reaction. It's going to be Martin Truex. All right. One penalty. Daniel Suarez had an uncontrolled tire on his number 99 so he'll start in the back and a correction uh, Anthony Alfredo was on the lead lap at the time of the caution so that means Garrett Smithley will get the free pass and there goes the tire from the 99 <laughs> and they got running after you get that tire now yeah you saw I mean that you know the timing of all those things have to be so orchestrated and you saw that tire just hit the other tire and bounced away from the guy trying to grab it. Hamlin chooses the outside. I, I got to believe this is sort of a, a, a teammate thing that they're going to work together on this. Or, hey, maybe Denny just really likes being able to hold uh, the 19 of Truex. Now you're down seeing low. a teammate right there. Gave him a little bit, braked, slowed up a little bit, put him down. Now he's going to get going. Boy, yeah, but that opens up the door for Joey Logano to get to the outside of Truex. Puts me right back into the what we saw on pit road. If I'm Martin Truex right now, biting my lip a little bit. Dang it, guys. Such tight quarter racing off of turn two back there, Jeff. It's, you run out of real estate, especially on these restarts with cars on your outside. You know, I, I expected more guys to start on the inside lane. But um, these guys that chose that outside lane, it's actually been working for them. It, maybe it's you know just for a couple laps, it, it, it really helps you uh, kind of get that exactly momentum off the corner. What I was saying, what you see right there, you can take the real estate. You need that real estate moving up off the racetrack. You're trying to hold it and stay off that car. If you can get in position on them, you can hold them down and make the pass. How about this guy, the two, Brad Keselowski, we talked about it and talked to him at the start of this uh, show. Man, he runs so good here, and he is making his way up through there, Mike. Now, he started 20th, Jeff, and that is due to the matrix NASCAR uses when we don't have qualifying. It's a combination of point standing position, prior race finish at Martinsville, and fastest lap ranking at Martinsville. So he started 20th, but Regan, he's coming to the front. Mike, he absolutely is. A strong race so far for Brad. Spoke to Crew Chief Jeremy Bullins this morning, said, how much did you change since the last time here? You guys won that race and were so quick. He said, we actually changed a few little things. They wanted to focus on the long runs with that race car. So as this race play out, plays out, let's wait and see how that two car is on the long runs. They should be a little better. And you saw right behind the two car, we talked about those that did great on pit road, but the four car of Kevin Harvick there, they had, he got blocked in, had a little uh, issue on that stop, lost some spots. Also, Kyle Larson, the five car, lost uh, something like 10 or 11 spots on pit road. See yeah, Jeff, Dillon Kyle right Larson's there. five crew was a 17.78 compared to a lot of 12 and 13 second pit stops. Woo. Not, not, not too good. Jamie? Well, to follow up with that on the five car, he was really tight in the center and the splitter was getting into the track. So Cliff Daniels, crew chief, decided to put a packer in to get that splitter off the racetrack. And that's why they had such a long stop. There's the rest of the story. Yeah, exactly. and, and you need to use that opportunity. Do not wait to the end of the race. Don't let this, you know, continue to hold you back. You need to count, uh, pounce on it, get the adjustment done early. Well, you have the rest of the and, and then take that up. first opportunity to make the biggest adjustment. Yeah. As for Denny Hamlin, we went back through all of their pit stops this season, and the one they just made was their second fastest of the entire year. 
And look what it got him. Well, I appreciate it right now, but I need that again at the end of this <laughs> race when the money's on the line. Now, Christopher Bell passed Brad Kozlowski two laps ago. Brad keeps having a look to the inside. Well, we talked about this uh, before the race today, and, and we really believe Christopher Bell could have a standout race here. He's been very good here in the Xfinity cars. The, he, you know, Joe Gibbs racing so strong here. Look at our, our top, you know, two or three guys there, his teammates. So I expect Christopher Bell to be very strong. Not yeah. a surprise to me that he's going to the outside now, moving forward around the outside of uh, the nine of Chase yeah. Elliott. You're looking at three-time Xfinity race winner here so uh, for sure has the credentials to get it done. See right there in position. Whoa so close. That's where you got to pin him down. If you can just get to their right rear now he's going to get in there if we can roll it around there take that real estate away that I talked about see now he's going to complete the pass because the nine car had to pull on the wheel to stay off of him right there and as he did that it got loose. Yeah, that tight condition turns into a loose condition, right? Once, once the back end comes around. And here, more than any, you want to talk about frustrating, Mike. Here, more <laughs> than anything, that old girl, she's tight in the middle, and you won't turn, won't turn. As soon as you stand on the gas, now the thing wants to spin up. Back to that conversation. Which one is it? What will help you the most? <laughs> I need both. <laughs> <laughs> and I need it now, right? <laughs> so Bell holds sixth. Hamlin with a second lead over Logano. The other thing you have to pay attention to, and it goes right back to that conversation, right? Which one's hurting you the most? Rolling the middle of this track is so important. You heard Kevin Harvick, I want to free this thing up in the middle. Got to be careful, though, because what happens is you go too far, you get loose in, you get loose off. Well, let's use our telemetry lower left and take a ride with Denny Hamlin out front. You can see out of the gas real early tapers that break all the way to the center until it's time to pick up the throttle. Look at that 50% throttle almost all the way out to the wall. Only wide open on this front straightaway for just a couple seconds. What I see that I like the most is the brake. Very little brake input it tells me the car's rolling nice. That enables him to get off that brake pedal, save that brake temperature in them tires. Oh, by the way, that helps on a long run, keeping that temperature out of those tires, because we all know temperature adds air pressure, makes those tires not work. Boy, that he just making it look easy right yeah. now. Just so smooth, under control. Car's very stable on entry and on exit. Textbook. And, and he is pulling away just slightly on Joey Logano. As we see uh, Brad Keselowski bringing Austin Dillon along, perhaps seventh for, kick for for Brad now. Yeah, we talk about short run, long run. I tell you what, Brad Keselowski and the three of Austin Dillon have very good long run cars. He's continuing to see Chase Elliott struggling right there, and, and I think he's still tight, Jeb. You can see that car have a lot of wheel in it, and then it wants to snap and get loose up off. That tells me right there at that three quarter mark, you've got to have that car neutral so it doesn't want to spin the tires. So let's not ignore William Byron, who sits in fourth place. What are they thinking on the 24? Toronto 1, down 11 or 22 is left in. For turn three, we're on top of each other. Uh, turn one, we we drag brake in there a little bit. Uh, we use less brake, honestly, uh, than most of them, most of the time. Right now, we're doing okay. And, and that's these teams analyzing that same telemetry that we were looking at and, and looking at who's fast and trying to compare your driver to their driver and feed some of that information back over the radio. Smart move right there by Kevin Harvick. You know, we talked about Chase struggling with a tight condition. If you can get to his outside right there, take that position away, that racetrack away on the exit, he'll have to lift. That's how you make the pass. Joey Logano now beginning to close in just a bit on Denny Hamlin, and you'll see it all as we take you Fox side by side.
Saturday on FS1, a great MLB doubleheader. The Nationals take on the NL East leading Mets at 3 Eastern. Then at 7, the Rangers battle the White Sox. It's all on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. 62 laps complete in Richmond. Denny Hamlin leading Joey Logano by about that same 1.3 seconds. What's going on with the leader? This is as easy as I can take care of the rear tire. That's just something I have enough. Day race every so bad. Rear tire is going to be worn out for everybody. Just keep managing. Do it good. And I think Denny's one of the best at taking care of rear tires, especially at this racetrack. So. Yeah, that's that's really good information mm -hmm. back to the crew chief to, to see, OK, is there an adjustment of air pressure or something that we might be able to do to help that drive off? Look at the speed difference in just 20 green flag laps. I, I tell you, Mike, this place for about one lap has incredible grip of those <laughs> tires <laughs> and it starts to fall off really fast. Wow, look at unbelievable that. massive difference. <laughs> Yeah, the biggest thing a crew chief has to be here is a salesman. I know you're spinning your tires, but you're spinning them less than the competition. But that is so true and, and very important, too. You know, attitude goes so far in this deal in any sport. But but this racetrack, the frustrations, you know, there is no perfect setup. you got two corners that are drastically different than one another. Keeping your driver cool, keeping him in the game, keeping him pumped up. It's a big, big part. Alex Bowman puts some pressure on Brad Keselowski. Bowman is up six spots since the restart. Uh, make that seven as he moves into eighth place. We're definitely starting to see some consistency and some fast race cars out of that 48 Ally Chevrolet. We saw it last week and then of course the loose wheel at the end really hurt him. He saw him wrap that bottom right there, and Brad kind of moved up and tried something different. You see how Brad's not on the bottom right there, struggling. If you get down there in one and two, it's almost kind of like Atlanta, what we talked about. You get down there, lock onto that train track down there, and hook that yellow line, man, feels good. Now, Bowman's only seen 1.2 seconds of fall off from his best lap to his last lap. Leader Denny Hamlin is two seconds difference between his best lap and his most recent lap. And a lot of that is just clean air. You know, Denny Hamlin had clean air at the beginning. He could take off and, you know, really put down, lay down some fast laps. So when you're back in traffic, you know, you're, you're maneuvering through that traffic. You got all the disturbed air back there also. So you don't, you don't, you don't normally put the best laps together on a restart, but uh, sometimes that'll take care of those tires in the long run too, Mike. Here's 11th place. Kyle Busch to the inside of Chase Elliott and the lap car of Josh Balicki stays up high and out of the way. This is certainly the point in the run where you're starting to move around finding you see right there see his right sides on those hash marks. I've always told people there for whatever reason there's a lot of juice right there a lot of grip seems like there now you get down here in one and two kind of the same thing. But for me I had to diamond off the, the exit I had to shoot back across and, and keep my car flat and what that means on the throttle you want to get that left rear down and digging. Keep an eye on this 47 42 battle. Uh, they were very close to contact coming off turn number four. Ricky Stenhouse and Ross Chastain. A couple of aggressive drivers. Yeah. <laughs> Neither one of those guys will back down. Nope. <laughs> that is for 14th position. Well Ross Chastain we know we've documented this in the past needs a good run and he's putting one together here. That car looks strong the 42. Unfortunately for Chase Elliott things are not going the right direction. So uh, gonna gonna have to really dissect down those those details and that handling and see if they can't make a, another major adjustment. Jamie you have something on the nine. Yeah and that first stop for the nine of Chase Elliott they just made an air pressure adjustment in the right rear very slight. But now he's saying his biggest problem is that the entry to the corner is worse. They said I guess we'll just have to go back on that adjustment a little air pressure adjustment coming up on this next stop. Well, and that goes right back to what you were saying Clint you know be careful what you fix because mm -hmm. it can then accentuate something else that you thought was not going to be a problem. But in this case they probably tried to free him up through the center and then that made his entry real loose. And it's one of the hardest things as a driver in that car you know that crew chief he's capable and willing and wants to change that thing. He's going to take a swing at it and you know in the back of your mind man I don't know. 
When I have both of these problems, it's a hard thing to fix. Trex closing on Logano right here. See the differences in lines of what Joey Logano is trying to do is straighten out that front straightaway and that exit off of turn four to get that launch. Coming into three here. So it looked to me like oh. maybe Logano <laughs> carried a lot of speed into the center and went up the racetrack. Looked to me like he, either his spotter or his mirror worked pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 68 degrees and a mostly cloudy day. But we are beginning to see the sun poke through here from time to time. And that is just a, a, a crew chief's nightmare. You're trying to adjust to certain circumstances, what your driver's telling you. And as soon as you get a plan together, all of a sudden the track conditions change and the balance of the car and the grip level changes. But they can play it into your favor too, right? If you're fighting a little bit of a, a loose condition or a tight condition one way or the other, those clouds coming in and out of that might help you or they're probably going to hurt you. <laughs> Usually make your problem worse. 15th through 17th here as Elliott continues to backslide. He restarted sixth. See right here in front of him, Tyler Reddick. I heard reports of him being loose in. You can see him pretty nervous right there. Slow getting into the corner trying to roll. Truex around the outside of Logano. Lapped car ahead. That, that drops to the bottom. That's a. Oh, Joey missed the bottom right there. Moved up. Kind of run him up the track a little bit. Yeah, once, once Trix can get to that quarter panel, if this lap car doesn't mess with his line, he yep. should be able to get this position. There he goes. B.J. McLeod staying way up high and out of the way. Okay, last lap for stage one. So they're going to race each other pretty hard right here, I think. Oh, Hamlin just gave the bumper to a lapped car coming out of turn two. That's Turn Corey on. LaJoy. And you know Corey, he's fighting to stand that lead lap. And he just might do it. Here they come to the line to complete the stage. And I think Den I think Danny yep. cut him a break. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Denny Hamlin wins stage one. So score one for the hometown hero, Chesterfield, Virginia's Denny Hamlin.
Pit road's open, Regan. Oh, William Byron, bottom left of your screen, that race car, they missed the adjustment the first stop. That race car's been too loose for him in right now, the 22, Joey Logano, upper right of your screen. That race car has just been a little bit too tight for him this run, Jamie. Denny Hamlin in the 11 has led 52 laps, wants to work on drive, basically just wants it to roll better and carry that speed through the corners. The 12 of Ryan Blaney, a little tight in the center, but he wants those back tires to stay under him longer, basically what everybody wants. Track bar and air pressure, the 19 center is too tight. He can't point off the corner, and it's a gaggle, but it's the 11 team once again. And there's your Ram race off pit road. Kyle Busch, the big winner there. Kevin Harvick picks up two. And we looked back at Harvick's first pit stop where he lost a bunch of spots and it turned out he had to wait for the last car in the lead lap Anthony Alfredo to get into his box before Harvick could leave his pit and that was the reason. You say we dial up stage one winner. Hey Denny this is the guys up at the Fox Sports booth you got us. Well man same story <laughs> man you, you guys are just flawless right now the car looks great uh, great pit stops. And uh, you're out there setting sail, but it's early. So tell me, you know, how, how do you approach this to get yourself in position to get that first win of the season? Uh, just trying to keep up with the racetrack. I think, uh, you know, obviously got a good good baseline here. Uh, us in 19, and I'm not sure where the rest of the teammates are, but I feel like our car is pretty good. Just got to fine tune it a little bit, keep up with the track as it changes. All right, man. Thanks for talking to us. Good luck the rest of the way. We didn't have the heart to tell him that the stage nope. one winner has not won. No, I did not. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll boys. leave that for you next time. <laughs> the stage one winner has not won since when? Last, Last year. year. <laughs> Oops.
ready to start stage two. Benny Hamlin, Martin Truex, second career stage win at Richmond for Hamlin. B.J. McLeod got the free pass. Josh Balicki did not stop and took the wave around. Pace car is in. Here they come to the Geico restart zone. A much better start for second place Mark Church Jr. all over the rear bumper of our leader Denny Hamlin right now. In the 22 of Logano had good short run speed last time. You're going to see it again right here as he looks at the inside of Martin Truex. Kyle Busch there capitalizing on a great pit stop. Plus four for them guys. Fourth place, Blaney around the outside of William Byron. Bowman going to the inside of William Byron. Tell you what, that 48 car is fast today. Alex Bowman just ran his fastest lap of the race. See Kyle Busch rolling to the outside. Kevin Harvick taking advantage of that good pit stop, but also taking advantage of that car how good it rolls around the outside. Oh <laughs> maybe spoke a little too soon right there through the center maybe got a little greedy with it but he still got the exit speed. Still out there bumper. There he got a little run still outside. Try to cross over watch your bottom clear low clear low. That was a good view of that left rear tire Clint how low they are on air pressure. Help that car turn through the center, but also hope that that car squats down and, and gets a, uh, a grip of this racetrack with that low air pressure. Well, you know, yeah, Jeff, they'll go down to about 10 PSI. That's that's just a little more than you actually put in a basketball that you play <laughs> out in the driveway with. That's one of those things the driver doesn't want to know. Just just yeah. don't tell me. Yeah. Sixth place, Kevin Harvick. Down to the inside. Harvick is the only car in the top 10 that is not from one of this season's three powerhouse teams Joe Gibbs Penske or Hendrick. Certainly not been a, a very Kevin Harvick esque type of season for them but I do see them making slight gains each and every week and their picker has been keeping them in the game also. And this is a good racetrack for him. He likes this place. Gets around it well. We talked about him in the pre-race show with him. I, I think he can run in the top five here and be a huge momentum builder for him and his team. Well, one of the cars before. he's going to have trouble passing is Alex Bowman, who just made it up to fourth place. Yeah, he's marching his way forward. We saw some speed out of that car in that last run, so that continues. I don't know if they made any adjustments, Greg Ives, in that team on pit road but uh, right now things are, are, are really rolling well for this team. Kozlowski a ninth under fire from Christopher Bell and the lead is tightened up. Truex wants that clean air. <laughs> He's been all over Denny Hamlin from the start and, and it's such a tough place to be if you're the leader of Denny Hamlin you know you've got to save these tires you don't want to push it too hard but you got your teammate who you know you might have to race for the win. Now here comes Truex gets to the outside. Yeah you saw how much he beat him to the throttle right here. <laughs> Up off that corner he smoked him to the gas. Only two drivers have led in these first 100 laps and you're looking at them. Big run half quarter. That FedEx strong on the back of Hamlin's car uh, was added yesterday in response to the tragedy in Indianapolis. That whole company racing and working with heavy hearts. You just see he's just rolling better than him. Beats him with the gas, beats him in the middle. 
it's going to be hard to keep behind you. And right now, if you look in your rearview mirror and you're Mark Trex Jr., you see that 22 of Logano coming into the picture. You want to get this pass made and, and, and made quick, but it's also your teammate. You got to got to kind of be kind in how you play right now. More than two good battles on the racetrack right now. And folks, please don't blame us. But the last caution for cause at Richmond that was not a competition caution or a stage break happened in 2019. <laughs> well, but but what does that do? That just goes back into your playbook, you know, of, of what kind of strategy you're going to play. We see how much fall off is in these tires. So you're going to see some when they finally have to come under green and make some of these stops of, of how they vary that and utilize those fresh new tires and that that two second gap that possibly is built up there from somebody on old tires. So Larry if we stay green what's your plan for this second stage. Yeah Mike the fuel window is about 105 to 115 laps but what they're going to do they will split this stage into third so what they'll do they should pit here probably in about 30, 32 laps around lap 138. Again, at lap 186, that gets you to the end of the stage two. Two stops in this stage. A strategy that seemed contrary when first tried here by Ricky Stenhouse and crew chief of Brian Patty when they were at Roush Fenway racing. 105 complete teammates in Toyotas battling for the lead. Here's the Xfinity more than fast moment from Martinsville. Number 19, Martin Truex Jr. was able to make an incredible save with 103 laps remaining, proving it takes more than speed to succeed. Vote for this week's more than fast moment at Xfinity Racing on Twitter. Xfinity, proud premier partner of NASCAR. 113 of 400 laps complete in Richmond. Here are the Xfinity fastest laps of the day so far. All of these were set on lap two 
of today's race and look we're in full sunshine right now and that's going to have an effect on things. You see the glare off the shield of Martin Truex who leads Denny Hamlin by eight tenths of a second. So what are the best and worst pit stalls here at Richmond. There are the three best beginning with pit stall one usually taken by the pole sitter. And those are the three that have not proven to be so successful. And the reason why is timing lines. I mean, obviously, this pit road not having it happened not only one, but two curves as you're coming in and exiting on here makes it pretty unique to others. But those timing lines and where these pit stalls are at located within those are so important. Well, and there's a reason why Denny Hamlin ranks as one of the best on rolling time as a driver gets down pit roads because that team does a good job working those timing lines for those pit stalls. So Kyle Busch back in 11th. Uh, not lost on him that his fastest lap of the race is almost half a second slower than Denny Hamlin's fastest lap, Regan. Well, Mike, his lap, that lap is slower, as you just mentioned, and you would expect the six-time winner here to be very happy at this track, but Kyle Busch a little frustrated right, frustrated right now. Listen to this. I can't step on the gas on the exit of the corner with no drive. Free it out chassis-wise and give me some rear downforce. Uh, that's what it needs. Now it's right middle. It's, it's past the point of center, of decent center, I guess, and no better off. So we work center. I just love my job. <laughs> now, <laughs> so what, what did he say in pre-race? that on his best of days on a scale of one to ten his frustration meter drops down to about a five. Yeah exactly he just drives frustrated maybe that's his motivation that's what gets him to get the result that he's looking for and you know some of this is just you, you're venting right you, you're frustrated and how do you get that frustration out well sometimes you push that button on the steering oh, wheel pop -off and start valve. talking. Yeah, I always said that was my pop off valve <laughs> I wasn't very good at that thing I neither was a lot, I Mike. Oh it was so easy just reach up and hit the yeah. button. And then everybody, you get out and look at your guys, and they won't look at you after the no. race. Like, well, what's wrong with you? <laughs> well, Larry, when he says, just give me some more rear downforce and laughs, uh, he's kind of making a joke, but not really, is he? Well, he is, Mike, but, but that's the challenge of this place, and it has not changed in years, is you try to help the turn in the middle, and you don't really help it. You just hurt the drive off. So that's what I said when I was talking to Clint earlier, all kidding aside. Tell me what it does first, and that's what we'll work on, and then we'll work our way around the corner. Well, and some of the added frustration there, Larry, is it's not that it's that he's in 11th spot right now and, and wanting to move forward. It's all three of his teammates are ahead of him. Truex is the leader. Hamlin second, and and uh, Christopher Bell is in sixth. And Eric Almirola right here, finally having a good run, the run that we expect out of him. Needs a top ten. Hasn't had one this year. This is a big, big run for them. Got to be able to close the deal, though. These guys, he's run well, but he's really struggled to get to the end of these races. Right. At this point last year in the season, Almirola had three top ten finishes, as Clint pointed out. None just yet. And just ahead of him, Ryan Blaney, for whom statistically Richmond, Jamie, has been his worst track. Yes, this has been a terrible place for Ryan Blaney. So they put Brad Keselowski's setup on, and he was doing a good job with it to start out this race, running top five. Now he has slipped back to ninth, barely hanging on to ninth from Eric Almirola, pressuring him from behind. But after 20 laps this run, he said, it's terrible. There's no drive off as we keep hearing. Just the rear tires are gone. He can't hang on. Blaney's average finish here, 25th. 45 of 155 laps complete in this stage. Martin Truex leading Denny Hamlin by a slim margin.
Aerial coverage of Richmond provided by Goodyear. For those who push the limits of possibility, Goodyear more driven. 132 laps complete, and our leader, Martin Truex, in that blue number 19, getting into traffic. Danny Hamlin closing right up. So let's go under the helmet with Martin Truex Jr. Brought to you by Toyota. NASCAR champion and last week's winner Martin Truex Jr. is achieving his goals both on and off the track. Alongside his longtime girlfriend Sherry Pollux, Martin and the Martin Truex Jr. Foundation founded Catwalk for a Cause. The event drives awareness to the fight against childhood and ovarian cancers. Over the years, NASCAR drivers and their families have participated to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for the fight against childhood and ovarian cancers. Did I just see Clint dancing? That was an attempt. Such a neat <laughs> program, the catwalk for a cause that Sherry Pollux and, and him have done. Phenomenal job, so much fun, but the impact that it makes in those kids, you know, the, the light that you see in their eyes, it's just neat. It's very, very special, cool event. And I'm, uh, you know, very, very proud to be a part of that every single year. You get that invite, that's one you want to be at. Great event, absolutely. Truex, of course, tops our list of Toyota top performers. Hamlin second, Bell sixth, Kyle Busch and Bubba Wallace. Chris Buescher has hit pit road, so has Kevin Harvick. And here comes Kyle Busch as well. Regan. Well, oh, Kevin Harvick, one of the first cars to blink. They hadn't helped the center of that race car at all, and they still were too tight, so they wanted to go ahead, pit now, making an adjustment. And we saw Kyle Busch on pit road. That race car, they continue to hurt the center for him also. Lots of complaints about the center of the corner right now. The leader, Martin Truex, is in. So was Ryan Newman. 48 of Alex Bowman, Eric Almarola, and more. Jamie. The 19 Martin Truex Jr. car is pretty good. He got a better restart there, and that helped him a lot. He's had the lead for quite a while. A four-tire stop here. Eric Almarola in, and Denny Hamlin's team on the wall waiting for their driver to make it down as well. Joey Logano takes over the lead. Jamie? Denny Hamlin rolling better this run. That's really what he wanted. The whole idea coming into this race was to adjust it so that the corners were connected. Entry and exit. They've pretty much done that. It's just a matter of rolling the middle. Let's go back to Regan. Joey Logano took the lead for one lap there, decided to pit immediately afterwards. Car fired off better, but it's not turning the center quite as good as he wants to right now. Logano on pit road. He may not officially lead a lap. Brad Keselowski looks like will from Austin Dillon. Chase Elliott, William Byron finishing up. This Eric. is where you can't afford mistakes. It's so hard to get on pit road here. The transition as you're going on the racetrack, trying to make the decision, stay up on the track as long as you can, or get down on that apron where you know it's probably going to be dirty. Very, very important. And it's also equally as important to not beat yourself in this situation. Well, and, and Mark Trex Jr. has had some. Oh, issues. turn three. Around oh. goes Newman. They were three wide and they wouldn't all fit. He goes off the uh, bumper of Austin Cindric. Oh, talk about bring timing. Out the first caution for cause. And who benefits? The top six. Keslowski, Dylan, DiBenedetto, Reddick, and LaJoy, and Suarez had not yet stopped. That is not what you want to see if you just pitted. Well, the, it, but if you're Brad Keselowski, it's what you want no. to see. Now, the six of Newman had just been on pit road. He came with some of the leaders, so you know, should have new tires. See, we're three wide here. See, Larson. Ooh, Larson goes to the inside of, of the 33 of Austin Cindric, but it looked like Cindric tried to give him a lot of room and made contact with Newman. Hey, that's a product of trying to get into turn three, three wide. Never <laughs> works. Cindric making his third career cup start and first at Richmond. One of six drivers making their first cup start here today. I mean, it's luckily uh, the six of Newman made really minimal contact yeah. with that outside wall. So you really see, think and in an area of the car that should be less sensitive. 
Well, I don't know if you can pin that on Austin Cindric. I mean, honestly, you go three wide getting into turn three. That outside car is going to be the one that loses that battle. So Christopher Bell will get the free pass, but a lot of good cars are going to have to take the wave around to avoid having to restart one lap down. Pit road will be open as we have just six cars on the lead lap. Bell will make seven plus uh, whoever takes the wave around. Well, remember when we were talking about that awesome strategy of utilizing new tires versus old tires? Yeah. It's really good unless the caution comes out. Ray, right. why did you pit me? <laughs> I just went with the trans, Clint. <laughs> Regan? Well, a great break for Brad Kozlowski with the caution coming out there. That race car is too loose. He needs to have it fixed getting into the corner right now. Very descriptive about where it's too loose as it gets into the corners. And the three car, Austin Dillon, he fires off loose. It gets better as he runs, but he's just way too loose to start runs. Jamie Little. Tyler Reddick in the A pulls into his pit box. A great break for them with that caution right there. The car's been okay. Very responsive to the adjustments they made today, but right now they'll focus on tightening them up because freeing them up didn't help. So keep your eye on those RCR cars moving forward. First caution for cause in two years here uh, at Richmond. Three wide into turn three. Risky business. Ninety laps to go in stage two in Richmond. With all the wave arounds, we will restart with 20 cars on the lead lap. Everybody from Kyle Larson on down. Larson, Bubba Wallace, Eric Jones, Austin Sendrick, Chase Briscoe, they're all one lap down. Along with the Chris Busher, Cole Custer, Ryan Priest, Michael McDowell, and BJ McLeod. They will restart one lap down after everything sorts out from green flag pit stops and this caution flag for Ryan Newman. Certainly hurt some guys, helped others. Austin Dillon's one of them that I look at. He was struggling, lost some spots on that last restart, said he was he was too loose right there. Now he's got up there and got that track position back, which will help all those problems. What I'm anxious to see is we, we documented how the two car and a couple others you know, caught that caution. Now they have fresh tires. The other guys ahead of them, about four or five of them, had three to four laps on their tires. Will we see a big difference in speed from those new, brand new fresh Goodyears versus those that have a few laps on them? Joey Logano will roll off fifth. We'll listen to his spotter, TJ Majors. Kevin Harvick has just led his 19th lap of the entire season, and he will lead them to green. 
back on the tires. Three wide. Two outside. Brad There's our the fresh top. tires. Outside. Three wide on the outside. Two outside. And you got to make it hay while the sun's shining, and Two that's outside. exactly what he's One trying to do right, right there. You know that, that that advantage is going to equalize, so you've got to pounce on it fast. Still there. Still there. 48. Still fairly there. You're clear by half. Watch bottom, watch bottom, watch bottom, watch bottom. Watch bottom. <laughs> TJ Majors, that was busy. Yes. Still three wide, way back through the pack. And one of those was Newman, uh, who took a little swipe out of Ricky Stenhouse's car. Well, you said it, Clint. You know, those, those new tires. For Brad Keselowski, he was able to go three wide, make a pretty aggressive move there in the first corner. But since then, it's it sort of leveled off for him. But this is the shot in the arm that he needed. You know, it, it's always amazing just how much that really shakes it. <laughs> Look at this action. Bail abort. Thought better of it right there with Austin Dillon. Probably a smart move right I there. thought we were going to see the same thing with Corey LaJoy that we just saw with Ryan Newman. He turned down in their corner, didn't expect him to be three wide, and they almost made contact and sent him around. Corey LaJoy was running right in this position, 10th or 11th last week at Martinsville and got uh, caught up in somebody else's mess. Somebody took the nose off his car on pit road. Prime example of the benefactor of, of that caution and how yep. it shakes things up in these races. So, so this is the battle for one lap down. Eric Jones and Kyle Larson. If that caution comes out, this is going to be a, a very important position. Yep, the fight for the free pass right here. And I can promise you the crew chiefs and spotters are telling them that very information too. You race him hard. We need this spot. Very important. Three wide behind them into the corner. And they sort it out. Christopher Bell way on the bottom, trying to get inside and away from it all. Kyle Busch in the middle of it. We know up here three wow. wide doesn't work at Richmond very well, but these guys hadn't figured it out. Wow, we're still three wide right here. Give each other a little bit more room. Man, that's awesome. That caught. is awesome racing right there. Kyle Bush says, hey, you guys are having all the fun being yeah. three wide. I'm going to put that. my number 18 car right in the middle. Yeah, Cole, you might have gone to the luck bank one too many times there, but now it settles out too wide. Good thing for everybody. Let's go back up front with Jamie. Martin Truex Jr. continuing to lead now, but he's been saying he's having to use too much brake to keep his car on the bottom of the racetrack. Now we just radioed that he has some brake shake. Clint, Jeff, what exactly does that mean and what can he do to fix the problem? There is not a worse track on the circuit <laughs> for that exact thing. And it's it's a heating and cooling thing. It, it's it's you know, usually there's just too much cooling down the straightaway, but you're using those brakes really hard, so then they get hot extremely fast, and it's either buildup or a little bit of, of, of warp in that rotor that causes that feedback and kickback in the pedal. And it's not just a little bit. We're talking violent vibration. You're thinking something's going to fall off this thing, and it, it'll just keep doing it lap after lap, but that's what it is. There is definitely a sweet spot in the brakes of these things. You know, they want to be, they want to be in that sweet spot, that 1,200 degrees. I'm talking hot hot and if you get them too cool they usually shake really bad but that being said he actually said that he was using too much brake and that goes back to what we were talking about earlier I want to be able to get in that corner get off those brakes and my car still roll and do the work for me if you have to what happens is you have to hold your brakes on to keep that nose pin to keep it turning now we're back to that conversation of brake temperature equals air pressure equals she's getting tighter. Well, and yeah, what would that do over the long run of those air pressures as they build up in those tires? So we'll be monitoring how Denny Hamlin's managing his brakes and his tires over this long run. And the other thing, too, that was to wrap the bottom. Whoa, you saw the 10 air Gamarola slip up right there. Almost. Did he slip up, though, because Ross Chastain was all over his rear bumper? Maybe we got some. Diving way down in the corner right there. 
That's good racing. Just kind of the way the year's been for Eric and that team right there. Again, was rolling right there. We just talked about it. Rolling in the top 10, everything's fine. Just marching slowly, methodically up through the field. Caution comes out. Restart the process. Brian Blaney got off to a, a slow restart, dropped three spots, but now seems to be maintaining pace with the group he's racing with. But back there at the back end of the lead lap at 18th. Let's take a quick check on the cars that benefited from this caution, uh, including starting with Keslowski, uh, who had been running eighth just prior to pit stops and getting lucky with the caution. He's now fifth. Austin Dillon was ninth, was 15th. He's now ninth. Matt DiBenedetto was 16th. He is now eighth. Tyler Reddick benefited. He was 18th. He's now sixth. And Corey LaJoy was 24th. He's now 11th. And finally, Daniel Suarez was 26th. He is now in the 10th spot. But up front, the winner of five of his last 11 Cup short track races, Martin Truex. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Welcome back to the Toyota Owners 400. Let's uh, check in on Clint's game and see who's going to have the best finish in stage two of this group. I'd say it's still in doubt. Sure hope y'all Paid attention to the Gibbs boys. <laughs> <laughs> Henrik guys are struggling a little bit. But yeah, I don't know which the one you picked here though. Joey, well, Blaney's in there too. Well, but between Mark Trix Jr. Denny Hamlin, yeah, Trix looks strong right now. But every time they come into some lap traffic, all of a sudden 
Denny really closes in, so that could swap the lead here at the end of stage two. Now, there are some feuds brewing on the racetrack. There's uh, Eric Almirola and uh, everybody. There's <laughs> Eric Jones and Corey LaJoy. Uh, there's Ross Chastain and the car in front of him. Uh, there, there's a lot going on here. It's called short track racing, yep. buddy. <laughs> and then he three the wide into three. Oh, I've been watching this battle. We just saw uh, the 18 of, of Kyle Busch came through these guys. They were making contact coming off of turn four. Here's a shot of that. You see Corey. how it gets to the outside of his teammate. And then Corey gets a little bit loose, so opens up the door. Look at the 18 squeezing through the middle. I <laughs> thought they made contact, but maybe not. And then here comes William Byron to be a part of this. Saw Kyle Wiggle pretty good getting off into turn one right there. That's pretty typical of turn one. Easy to get loose in there, especially when you drive it off in there that hard. Now Ross Chastain's working to stay on the lead lap. He and Ricky Stenhouse are the last two lead lap cars. Um, Blaney's on the lead lap, but the other cars they're racing against got trapped one lap down by the timing of that caution. <laughs> Good racing right there, Ross Chastain, Chase Briscoe. Ross crossed him over, got underneath of him, getting into three. Returned to favor down on three and four to the exact same crossover move. Chase Briscoe's father and grandfather fielded winning sprint cars in Indiana for a couple generations. And before he left Indiana, Chase took the record for the youngest driver to win in a 410 sprinter ever from Jeff Gordon. <laughs> Mustang week. How about that? Yep. Yeah, I, I raced with Chase Briscoe's family in those race cars for years. Boy, they always had great equipment and were one of the best cars that you're going to have to compete against week in and week out around the local tracks in Indiana. So wait a minute. Just, so if they beat the legendary Jeff Gordon, it was good. They had the best equipment out there. I didn't there, say that. that. I didn't say that. I'm just, we all had pretty good equipment. Well, Dave Blaney <laughs> and others drove those cars and did well with them. Tubi, fastest way to stream all your favorite movies and shows, and it's totally free. Yep, seriously. Download Tubi now and enjoy a streaming service that is for real, 100% free. For the for the record, Clint, I only say that about you when you beat me. <laughs> <laughs> that had to have been equipment. <laughs> All right, with Tyler Reddick in eighth and, and uh, Austin Dillon in tenth from Richard Childress Racing, both benefited by the timing of that caution and their director of competition, Andy Petrie, joins us. Yeah, let's see if we can dial him up on the radio. Hey, Andy Petrie, this is guys up at the Fox Sports booth. You got us? Yeah, I got you guys. How's it going? Oh, man, it's going pretty good. Seeing some great action out there. And uh, two of your guys are putting together a pretty nice race. I think that caution worked in your favor. But uh, tell us about the, the way the day is going. We saw where the three of Austin Dillon was really strong on one of those first runs. And then and then we've seen him fall back a little bit here. So tell us about what's going on with both your cars. Yeah, Jeff, we're chasing it just a little bit here. You know, this, the conditions, the daytime racing is a little different than you know, when our setup was here the last time at night, that caution for sure helped us because, you know, we were able to catch that and, and it was tough because we saw those guys coming down the road. And you know, when you lose all that time to them, you know, you get real nervous, but you know, that's the time that it's usually the most chance to have a caution because you got that disparity in speed. So it was definitely a break for us. Well, I know it's so hard to say you planned it that way, but how close were you to coming down pit road? Were you hoping to stay out there and maybe catch a caution and it actually worked out? Well, what we had planned on doing was just making one pit stop and the other guys that pitted, you saw that pitted early, were gonna make uh, two pit stops out of that stage. So we were on our strategy. It just happened to work out that the caution came out for us. Well, hey, great info. Thank you for uh, getting us up to speed there. Maybe we'll check back in with you later. All right, guys, thanks a lot. That's Andy Petrie with Richard Childress Racing. Martin Truex, who went 0 for 80 in his first short track races, has now led over 100 laps in six of the last seven here. And the leaders are pitting. William Byron is in. Martin Truex and Denny Hamlin are on pit road. Just, just park that commercial. 
because we've got action. We don't on need pit no road. stinking commercial. We got pit stops. <laughs> Jamie. Yeah, right when you guys started throwing a break, they said, let's pit now. So the 11's coming. The 19 wanted to come as well. They want to fix their cars up a little bit. The 19 is turning better, but losing forward drive. The 11 losing forward drive. So they'll make those adjustments and put on some fresh tires. Regan? Kyle Busch in the 18 car is going to pit as well with his Toyota teammates. That race car does not have lateral grip off the corner. It means it slides the back of the car as he goes off the corner. And Kevin Harvick will hit pit road as well. They continue to work on the center of that race car. They can't get it to turn in the middle. No rear grip into the corners. No rear grip off the corner. So a number of issues there. The 48 of Alex Bowman. He needs drive off the corners right now. Still lacking turn in the middle. And Mike, honestly, I thought that was about five or six laps early. I thought they would go to about lap 191. That would split it dead in half, but they decided to come just a little early. So Brad Kozlowski has not been in, neither has Christopher Bell. What's going on with the, with the two car, who is now our leader? I'd be the only one thinking this way, Brad, but I'm good with it if you are. I trust you, buddy. Okay. Well, certainly different in opinion and strategy. I like it though. You know, you, you can't can't win these races without being edgy, without doing something different to set yourself apart. So Denny, an example of that. Denny unlaps himself from Brad right there on the left of your screen. And that's such a crucial pass right now because you the first thing you want to do is get back on the lead lap. You take that risk to come down pit road. Then the next thing you want to do is just hope this thing keeps going green so those guys have to get to pit road. So now we have the situation Andy Petrie talked about. You've got five cars out there that have not pitted, plus some lapped cars that have not, and everybody else rushing forward on fresh tires. Man, how about this 11 car on pit road today? They have been phenomenal, 11.8, even bettering that time they had earlier at 11.9. How about that yep. consistency, huh? And, and that's what gets you the lead. So a little frustration maybe from the 19 of March Church Jr. on pit road, lo losing another spot. Well, we're likely to get a few more pit stops, and we don't want you to miss those either. So how about we take this next break with Fox side by side?
as Kurt Busch makes his pit stop then there was one everybody has made a second stop in this stage on the lead lap at least except Brad Keselowski and he is our leader he's up 12 and a half seconds on Denny Hamlin Brian Blaney also has not made uh, that second stop we see he was in a back on lap 138 interesting strategy Larry well it is Mike because we still have 38 laps to go to the end of the stage and right now Denny Hamlin is catching Brad Keselowski over a second a lap Hamlin is 11 seconds behind but if a caution comes out any time over the next few laps everybody's going to come to pit road Keselowski Blaney and everybody that just made their green flag pit stop so this because it's a little risky. You can see how much faster those new tires are with Brad Keselowski and the two being on old tires. But if they catch that caution like they did earlier, they're in the catbird seat again. That right there is what you got to be careful of. And it's hard to do the math on because he got caught up in that traffic. Everybody on tires all of a sudden starts putting you in a, in a situation where you lose even more time. Got to be careful. To, to count in the fact that, that you're going to be racing cars on, you know, lesser tires. And to your point, he lost two or three tenths just that last lap yeah. because of it. Regan? Well, guys, just a little bit of insight into the radio. Jeremy Bullens just came on the radio for Brad Keselowski and said, Brad, whatever happens here, we are going to have an extra set of tires for the final stage of this race. Might be what they were thinking, this long game with this two car. Jamie? Ryan Blaney, as you mentioned, another one that's only had three stops total today instead of four like everyone else except his teammate. They are going to run this out to the end of the stage. And Blaney right now saying car is not bad. He just feels like they're not going anywhere, not making up any time anywhere. Well, Brad Keselowski right now is being passed by the hot dog man. Everybody, <laughs> every car out there has driven right on by past Brad Keselowski right here. Yeah, I don't see this being the, the winning stage strategy, but if it gives them an extra set of tires later, that could be a big benefit. Here's there's new tires on Denny Hamlin versus the old tires on Brad Keselowski. Oh, man, look at that. Oh, yeah. Talk about launching off the corner. Yeah, Jeff, you never know if we get an outbreak of cautions in that final stage, but even the drivers that just made their green flag pit stops and we're right past the halfway, I mean, they still have four sets of tires left. The, the trends show you don't even come close to using all your allotment of tires. They had nine sets, including what they started to race on. They basically made four trips to pit road. You still have four sets left. Yeah, unless we get a, a string of cautions like we saw last week at Martinsville in the last 50 or 100 laps, that, that'd be about the only thing that would cause them to use up all those tires. Larry's glass is half full. <laughs> I like that. Always. See that dual telemetry down at the bottom. At this stage, if you're the number two car, Brad Keselowski, you're barely even getting wide open. You might not get to full throttle on any of these laps right now on those old tires. Well, it's definitely a pretty lonely feeling out there because there's you're helpless. Tires are completely wore out. Everybody around you is on new tires. They're putting you in situations you don't want to be in. You're just trying to find a hole so you can get back in your rhythm and make the best lap times possible for your guys. And you just can't do it. And you've got to make 30 more laps to the end of this stage. That's a lot. Well, uh, and, and the last time we were talking about this is only, what, five or six laps gone by, and it was 12 seconds. Now it's only down to about one and a half seconds. That's because of that traffic that he's in he can't get down and run that rhythm when was the last time you saw this that the leader of the race was the moving chicane <laughs> maybe here in Richmond. I was gonna I say so. Richmond. <laughs> Jeff I never questioned how you won 93 races but right now Brad Kozlowski the most wide open throttle he's getting around this three quarter mile track is about 80 85 percent he wow. can't even get a hundred percent and he is no longer the leader Denny Hamlin has retaken the front spot and driven off. Kozlowski still uh, eight tenths of a second up on Martin Truex. That number's coming down quickly. Well, this is where this gets precarious because if the caution doesn't come out, you were in fourth place before all these pit sequences started. Will, will you be able to even maintain being in the top five or possibly 
go a lap down if Hamlin keeps putting these kind of laps together. Well, I tell you what it does, it sends that signal to everybody. It ain't just you learning this lesson, it's everybody on pit road sees you too and they, hey, whatever we do in that segment, do not do that. And the that problem is stage. their bed is made. They can't pit now because they would go almost two laps down. You've made this commitment, you're stuck with it. I don't like the sheets, Larry. We need a different bed. <laughs> Boy, Denny Hamlin picking him up, putting him down as he puts uh, Eric Jones now two laps down. That leaves only five cars, one lap down from Ross Chastain back to Austin Sindrick in 21st are the one lap down cars. Daniel Suarez overcoming a pit road penalty back at lap 30 for an uncontrolled tire and uh, Regan, he has made a, a really great rebound. Mike, he really has, and that's something crew chief Travis Mack pointed out earlier today to me. He said, we have got to clean up our races. We got the speed, that's the tough part. We've got to clean up what we do on the racetrack. Not necessarily a clean day, I guess. You're not gonna have a clean day, just have the mistake really early so you can make up for it. And uh, thanks to Travis for that front bumper cam placement on the 99. The Coca-Cola flavors cam for Suarez. All right, Denny Hamlin back in command at his home racetrack, but a long way to go in Richmond. Starting in Darlington, May 7th, Camping World Truck Series drivers have a chance to win $500,000 in extra prize money with the Triple Truck Challenge presented by Wompley. Tune in each week on FS1 and see which driver takes home the big cash prizes. Here in the NASCAR Cup race, the Toyota Owners 400. 
181 laps to go, but most importantly, 16 to go in now 15 in stage two. And the big question is, can fifth place Brad Keselowski hang on to the lead lap until we get to the end of the stage? Well, if you do the math and depending on some some traffic uh, with our leader, Denny Hamlin, you're looking at a second. Oh, a little over a second that last time by from our leader, Denny Hamlin to Brad Keselowski. So every lap, basically, Denny's gaining another second to get back to the rear bumper, possibly put that two car Brad Keselowski down a lap. I am not liking this bed we made ourselves <laughs> at all. <laughs> But I am really glad that they made this, you know, call and, and, and went for this gamble because at the end of the day, that's what it is. You're after stage points. You never know. If that caution came out, that's the smartest man here. And it's that easy, that quick, and it can change that. Now, Ryan Blaney, the other driver on that strategy, has gone one lap down. He is not in the free pass position. That is 16th place Kurt Busch, one spot ahead of Blaney. Big time race and trying to keep from going a lap down here. I saw uh, coming off of turn turn four here, the nine really cut your leader, Denny Hamlin, off. It was close. Well, this could be a, a heated battle right here because Suarez and nine, the nine of Chase Elliott are battling for that position to stay on the lead lap. Try you to keep Denny Hamlin behind him. Listening to you say that, I want to give some praise to this Suarez, this track house team. It's been a long time since I can remember a team coming in as a startup team and being able to run and compete. You said he is racing door to door with a nine. Last year's championship team, he's racing door to door with at Richmond. Yeah. Pretty awesome. And what I'm going to give a lot of credit to the crew chief, Travis Mack. You know, his past experience from Hendrick Motorsports, Junior Motorsports, he's done an excellent job organizing this race team and putting some fast race cars out there. The other thing, what they're doing is helping Brad Keselowski in the two ball. They need to be battling those guys <laughs> racing this uh, leader Denny Hamlin. That is everything they want to see. Ten to go in the stage. I would say Kozlowski is safe right now. But Hamlin if he keeps tiptoeing through traffic is going to have Martin Truex Jr. right on his bumper Jamie. And the team is keeping Denny Hamlin informed of that. And right now, I think the two is the carrot that's dangling out there for Denny. They said if this stays green, you will lap the two. So he's keeping on. The car is really good right now. And just a reminder, this is Denny Hamlin's home track. He's won here three times, but he has not done so since 2016. How awesome would it be for Denny to get the first win of the season right here? Hamlin, or rather Keselowski, is six seconds ahead of Hamlin on the racetrack. With eight to go in the stand full though you would watch and see how hard he races him right here. I, mean, I just never mind. Doesn't, doesn't, <laughs> like, just doesn't have the car that, that Hamlin has right now. He just uh, Hamlin does. is on rails. But I tell you if you're Jeremy Bullins right here you're just praying the guys like Chase Elliott Ryan Newman right here hold him up keep him mired in traffic. I, mean, I think he's OK. I think he's got sufficient space on Hamlin not necessarily in time but in cars separating them. Well, it's it's going to come at... right down to that final lap yep. I believe Mike. <laughs> I'm pretty good at reading people and old Jeremy looked pretty nervous <laughs> on my <that> box. <laughs> <laughs> you know guys you see Denny Hamlin in the 11 one of our items we talked about in the pre race was power rankings of the teams on pit road. Denny Hamlin's last pit stop at lap 184 under green. That pit crew, that was the second fastest four tire stop of the season. All right, I take it back. They're three wide into one with Kozlowski <laughs> on the outside, Davison and Dylan and then look passing at this, the two. And there's a huge run by Denny Hamlin to get by a lap car down the back yep. straightaway. He sees that two car out there, and if he can get one of his fiercest competitors here at this racetrack a lap down, advantage, huge advantage for the I hate team. to say it, it's boys. Over, We're boys. fixing to make a mess out of this bed we made. Oh, no, there he is. And there's he nothing, gone. nothing Brad Keselowski can do right now. Yes, there is. Wait a minute. Going lap down. Well, there's one thing he Boys, can do. <laughs> wait a minute. You forget about the free pass. Keselowski's in the free pass position right now. 
Yeah, but he's just, either way, he's going to lose a ton of track position, but you've, he's also got to deal with the eight and the nine. Oh, crap. There goes the eight. <laughs> well, too bad for that oh. strategy. Yeah. Tyler Reddick moves up into the free pass spot. Arriving gate two, gate three. Gate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it's over and over, but we're not there yet. It's never over. Nope. It's only temporary. I mean, Brad had to lay over for all that traffic, faster traffic coming by him. And uh, Hamlin had no trouble catching him and driving on by. Well, that's the X Two factor. To go. That's the X factor yep. that, that Clint brought up. It'd be one thing if he was just making clean laps out there, but when you're also having to deal with other cars that have fresher tires, now it's it's sort of a double whammy about, about how much time you lose. And you per can't lap. calculate that. Easy to put the math to just regular lap times what you're doing. You have no clue the impact that those cars have in tires. You know, how do you gauge that? It's a guesstimate. All right, battle for the free pass coming here. As we're on the final lap of stage number two, there is Hamlin. The battles with Chase Elliott and Kurt Busch. Man, I'll tell you who got some points there for the first time. Eric Alvaroli and Matty D's up there in sixth place. Those, those are guys. two names that needed a big run. Guess who has now won three of the last four stages at Richmond? That fellow right there, Denny Hamlin.
Don't miss the return of former heavyweight champ Andy Ruiz as he takes on rugged veteran Chris Ariola, plus a stacked card of Mexican firepower. It all goes down Saturday, May 1st, live on pay-per-view. This one is not such a slugfest, but it's been an interesting and entertaining race with the Gibbs cars of Hamlin and Truex pretty much holding court so far at Richmond. Regan. Well, as we see the cars peel off the pit road, Kevin Harvick will hit the very first pit stall. His race car has been too tight in the center all day long. They haven't been able to get it to turn for him. Joey Logano, he says he's fighting everything right now. He did say he likes the turn of his race car, otherwise not happy in the 48. Alex Bowman, he's too free in and it won't turn. Jamie. Denny Hamlin's led 106 laps today. A little loose into three, but he said it's actually a good thing. Where he wants help is late exit, just getting it off the corner a little bit more than 19. Martin Truex Jr. rear tires. Once they wear, he can't turn it. Drive off and center is gone. So basically, wants a little help everywhere, guys. <laughs> All right, top three come off uh, pit road. Just the way they came in. Where's everybody else? Well, there's a lot of lap cars yeah. in between these guys as they hit pit road. Well, well, right now, Hamlin and Truex have both led the same number of laps. They both had their chance at the front. Yeah, well, we, we've seen Denny Hamlin. We talked to him win those first two stages. Let's talk to the guy that's finished second, Mark Truex Jr. Hey, Mark Truex Jr., this is Jeff and Mike and Clint up here in the booth. You got us? Yeah, I got you. Well, man, uh, looking very reminiscent of last week at Martinsville, Denny Hamlin, very strong, your teammate. But you went and stole that one away from him in that final stage. How about today? Yeah, we'll see, Jeff. You know, it's uh, just working on it here, trying to get it, get it the way we want. I uh, feel like we just kind of been back and forth there. And, you know, 11 has been really fast on pit road, so that's been a little bit of a disadvantage. But overall, I feel like we're close. We just uh, can't quite get three and four the way we need to. We'll keep working on it here. Well, hey, if it makes you feel any better, Nobody that's ever swept the first two stages have gone on to win, so you got a chance. Good luck. Yeah, there's always a chance. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. Have fun up there. <laughs> Wound and salt. No, no, no. That's for margaritas. Hamlin and Truex leading in Richmond.
<clears throat> Get to know your NASCAR home tracks across North America with the Advanced My Track Challenge. Visit AdvanceMyTrack.com. View each track stories. Vote for your track of choice to be the 2021 Advanced My Track Challenge winner here in this region. South Boston Speedway opened uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. Big opportunity for a track. Somebody's going to get $50,000 to the track. Make sure you go vote for your local. So two penalties, uh, one for Alex Bowman, that tire that just got rolled, rolled out of the pit box, the air hose hung. So a penalty for Bowman. And then Ricky Stenhouse uh, had a piece of equipment that interfered with another team's stop. So Stenhouse will go to the tail of the cars one lap down and the 48 for Bowman will restart 12th tail into the lead lap. You know, that's two weeks in a row where we've seen that hose get caught under the front splitter of a race car. Ryan Blaney last week at Martinsville. So much goes into that whip of that hose when you come over the wall as a pit crew member. And it's not an exact science either. Here they come to the Geico restart zone, including Chase Elliott, who was the free pass on the caution to end stage two. Hey, how about, oh, he thought about it. <laughs> That was obviously orchestrated almost exactly. Now he's blocking the inside. Orchestrated almost exactly like you you do on a uh, you know a super speedway, letting the outside guy get down. Your teammate working well together. Kevin Harvick was the caveat to that. Here about, comes a dive bombing. Yeah, Kyle Busch right here. These guys are ganging up on Mark Trex Jr. And they were four wide in the back. Everybody on new tires. Everybody trying to get some. Kyle Busch putting his yeah. name up in there. Shaking those frustrations away. Obviously, pit crews keeping you in the deal. And you're learning. You're listening to your teammates, your air pressures, your adjustments, keeping up with them. That's all the benefit of having two guards as strong as they are. You can follow suit and do exactly what they're doing, find the same success. Well, right now, you've got all four JGR car Toyotas right up there in the top six. You know, and again, Joey Logano, his short run speed, he can run right there with the 11 of Denny Hamlin and 19 of Martin Truex, but he can't do it for long. The long run, it really hurts him. I look, if, if the precautions start coming out to the end, he might be hard to handle. Big knot of traffic here. Six cars under a blanket, then four more single file. Three wide. Clint, you have 129 new friends. <laughs> All right. That, uh, pending eligibility are going to split your money and take home 77.50 each. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, Easy see, money. Free. I, I see why you're doing this game now. Trying to Winning gain some, new some fans. of your fans. <laughs> <laughs> Getting all your old fans, I got them. <laughs> Even if I have to pay them. <laughs> Clint tried making some friends last night. Marga and Rita. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Logano. Again, the short run speed. If he can get out there and get in that clean air, Jeff, and, and capitalize on that, he might be able to, to run with them. Obviously, adjustments on that uh, stage right there, keeping up with this racetrack, as you heard Denny Hamlin talk about. Man, I'm telling you, going to the front. Well, we've seen where Denny just seems to know where he wants to push his car, how hard he wants to push it, but he's going to have to push it a little bit harder here to keep Logano behind him. He does not want to give up that clean air. It's one thing I was noticing earlier is exactly what you saw right there. These Gibbs cars, they seem like they're really strong up off the corner. Seems like they got a lot of bottom end, which is so important on a track like this. Flip side of that is you got to be able to put it to the ground too and be you know, put the throttle down, not spin well, the tires. You see that right there? Example of yeah. it. Yeah. You just saw him just squirt away from the 22. That's that drive off that you look for. And while that's going on, the 19, Mark Truex Jr. coming right up into the picture. Same exact scenario too. So Joey really wrapped that bottom well. Car's turning good. Drove right to the bumper of the 11 again. And it's so you miss that bottom and it's too tense and I mean instant. It seems like Joey's hanging on there a little bit longer for this run but pretty good battle here sixth place 
Matt Benedetto and Christopher Bell. And good to see Matt running up front. Needed a, a strong run. Been beat up pretty good this year. Got that 21 car running up front. Logano, another look on the inside. And, and you see Denny, he moves up, gives him that inside lane. He's just going to keep working that outside lane, overheating those tires and brakes in the 22 car as he tries to make this pass happen on the inside. There's the difference. Yep. Drive off. And here comes Mark Jurex Jr.'s drive off of turn four. And a dive bomb getting into turn one. Yeah, I've got to give it to him, bud. Inside. But there's that real estate. See, this corner, when you get off at two, that wall straight in the back straight, it just cuts the racetrack off. If you can get in position right there, you take the real estate away. They don't have that track to move up, get around you. This is the move you try to do, though. See, he can get down on the inside, going to give it to him, get around there off of two, just like we saw the lap before. He doesn't have that track to move up and be able to put the throttle down, has to lift a little bit way the 22 goes. Clint, I was a little surprised. I thought Trix had a run to the outside, might be able to get yeah. all the way up alongside the 22 going into one under the brakes. Chose not to, chose to do that crossover, go back to the bottom, and it didn't work out. Well, and he was trying to do exactly what the 22's doing to him. Get to his outside, get to that right rear, take that racetrack away from him, that ability to move up and utilize that exit speed. So Larry, after seeing what happened to Keselowski in stage two on the one-stop strategy, what do you want to do in this final stage? I think once again, Mike, you have to split it in thirds. You wrote, we went back racing at, with 153 laps to go. That's 51 laps of a run for three times. So somewhere probably between lap 295 and 300, you know, 100, 105 laps to go. That's when you come your first time. And then the chess match, when do you come for that second stop if we stay green? Because Every lap you come in and get those fresh tires, that's about a two second advantage you'll have over the old tires per lap. 138 laps to go in the Commonwealth of Virginia, where sometimes things get just a little too close.
neatly shaped three quarter mile Richmond Raceway Denny Hamlin leading Joey Logano by six tenths of a second. Well low hanging fruit who are the credit one bank ones to watch. Well Mike listen Martin Truex Jr. finished second in his previous wins here at uh, Richmond second twice in stage two. Guess what he finished second today in stage two. I'm picking Martin Truex Jr. to go back to back here today. Jeff, Virginia's for lovers. I'm giving out the love today. I'm not trying to pick a race winner. Matt DiBenedetto, if it could happen to a race team, it has happened to them in these first eight races. He's looking for his first top 10 of the year, his first top 10 at Richmond, and he's sitting there solid at six right now. Guys, are you not watching this race? Denny Hamlin, the 11 car, he's my man. FedEx, we're racing with heavy hearts this weekend at home in Virginia, boy. Three wins here. Denny Hamlin's my guy. Clay, I would love to agree with you there, but Kyle Busch, who has six wins already at this racetrack, he has been quiet on the radio. They finally got him to where he's happier with that race car. He's my guy at the end of the race. Kyle Busch gets number seven. Like DiBenedetto, Eric Almirola has not had a top 10 finish this season. That changes today. He finished eighth here last year, gets his first top 10 of the year this afternoon. And those are your Credit One Bank ones to watch. I like this camera angle. I like watching these cars slide the back of that car off of the turn two over here, trying to stay out of the wall. Great shot. Look down that back stretch. Have you ever seen a racetrack with cabanas? Well, Richmond has them down the back stretch. Uh, they were each given for the day to a lucky Toyota owner to bring this family and do a little uh, tailgating out there uh, under the cabanas. That's cool. They're having yeah, a great cool. time. I like that. Yeah, we call those. Tents in Kansas, Jeff. And <laughs> yeah. I know up there in the Hamptons stuff where you're used to hanging out. There's cabanas up around Definitely there. Some huh? Cabanas. <laughs> <laughs> Pool boy, Regan. Mike, we saw the problem the 48 car had on that last pit stop. Had to fall to the back for the penalty. Great recovery for him. Listen to this audio. Buddy, I'm sorry. I gotta go. Let them know we're coming, Kevin. Oh, they know. Yeah, you tell them, Kevin. Go get them. Go yell at a bunch of spotters. Nobody likes me up here anyway, so it's fun. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes me down here. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, man. Guess you got to know who you are. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes me up here. Hey, man, you're not out there on the racetrack to make friends. 100 percent. Bring your friends with you. Well, everybody in the top five right now has won at Richmond between Hamlin, Logano, Truex, Kyle Busch and Harvick. 16 Richmond victories in that group. So what you're saying is cream rises to the top. Jamie. How about Chase Elliott in the nine the 48th teammate. He is hanging on to that lucky dog position right now. It has been a struggle just tight in the middle and then racing for the lucky dog earlier. He had some right rear damage. They had a long pit stop. They're trying to go in the right direction guys but it just hasn't been there so far today. This is what champions are all about though hanging in there hanging tough staying in the game. He could just as easily be with their car that they have today two laps down being we had that caution that shook things up keeping your cool staying in, in the game and, and working together trying to figure this out and get the most out of a day. That's what championships are all about. Well, and listen by by hanging tough in there they've stayed on the lead lap and you don't want to have damage to that right rear quarter panel or quarter of the bumper because that's a critical error for the aerodynamics. But Hey, uh, one more time down pit road. They might be able to, to even improve it a little bit more. Battle Mr. Bell, Eric Almirola battling for seven. Man, what a great drive by Eric Almirola. <laughs> I mean, what has this guy not been through this year so far? Just just so badly want to see both him and Matt uh, Benedetto put together a great result here. Well, they're nose to tail right now. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'm telling you, that 10 car is extremely fast right now. This could be a. a easily be a top five run for them. <laughs> Needed. Boy badly. Got to start. You got to stop the bleeding and then you got to start digging right. Dig yourself and, out of this hole. And it just it, it's one lap at a time one race at a time one top ten at a time and then hopefully those turn into top fives. And maybe even a win. 
Top 12 cars on the lead lap. Brad Keselowski in the free pass position. The first car one lap down. With 111 laps to go, let's update the Coca-Cola Racing family. Denny Hamlin is your race leader. Joey Logano is second. Austin Dillon making a green flag pit stop, and so is Daniel Suarez. Ryan Newman, 31st. So green flag stops have begun. Regan. On the right side, you see Austin Dillon. They have been fighting a loose race car all day long, have not been able to get that car under control. And Daniel Suarez in the 99, that race car has been good on entry, good enough that they can free it up more for the middle and help his turn. Kyle Larson in along with Alex Bowman and William Byron. Here comes Chase Briscoe and more. Yeah, Mike, once one come, you can't you just cannot be that far behind because again two two plus seconds a lap you're giving up. Corey LaJoy Cole Custer Christopher Bell now and Kurt Busch in the pit lane. So is Tyler Reddick. But most of the lead lap cars staying out. Nope here's Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick Regan. Well, Kyle Busch continues to have a strong run today after they fix that race car up. Right now he's as free as he can be with it. He can't have it any looser, but he still needs the front to work just a little bit better on that car. Kyle, or Kevin Harvick in the four car has been absolutely plowing all day long. Fifth place, a good day, but he says he's plowing. And here's the leader, Denny Hamlin on pit road right behind Ryan Priest, Chris Busher, Jamie. Denny Hamlin, a heck of a run today. Just little things here and there that he's wanted improved, and they've done a pretty good job. He was a little tight to get started there, and that's how they close the gap, but they're good. The 12, Ryan Blaney, you see a big adjustment there. The right rear, four tires here for Blaney, who started off the day pretty solid, and he's just kind of falling back, Regan. 
Joey Logano continuing to have a nice run right now. The drive off of the corner is what's costing him the most, most amount of time. Can't be any tighter, but he needs more drive off as well. And the two car of Brad Keselowski, that car is turning better right now. They went too far with it, though. He's just a little bit too loose right now. All the Penske cars have been in. I really thought somebody might, and Kyle Busch was one of the first ones, but I thought the 19, you got Truex there. Jamie, let's go down to you. Martin Truex Jr., the only repeat winner so far this year. Three and four, not where they wanted, but just like Denny Hamlin, they're very similar, just little things that they've been nitpicking through the corner to make these cars better. But what I was going to say is I expected maybe the 19 of Truex, the 22 of Logano, to try to short pit to get ahead of Denny Hamlin, our leader. Instead, they actually stayed out a lap or two. You see Kyle Busch, he was one of the first of the leaders to come on to pit road. He actually gained a spot. Oh, Martin Truex, too fast entering. Oh, boy. That's what you can't have happen under these green flag stops. He will have to make a drive down pit road at pit road speed. Red. Here he comes Liner in. Red. Line now. And that will cost him at least a lap. One of the things I noticed right there, if you saw it, when he came in even that time, he was pretty low and, and goes back to, you know, everybody running the outside of that thing and where you set your 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 lights right to to hit your uh, timing lines and things like that. He was low and then migrated to the outside. It could have been right there. Yeah, I mean, they're dealing in hundreds and thousands of a second. So all it takes is a little bit of a lower line and that could do it. First speeding penalty this year for Truex uh, section nine on pit road is where he was above the legal limit. And unfortunately it's the only one you know other than 11 that he can't outrun you know don't beat yourself. Number of drivers uh, including Brad Kozlowski locked him up. A lot of tire smoke coming out of pit road. Here's Bubba Wallace you can doing see, much the same. He tried to get down to the apron, but he carried too much speed, started locking the left front tire up. Almost didn't make it. And that's the difference in, in how people drive that. You know, I would always try to get on the apron and just stay on there because when I tried to make that transition, stay on the track and get down, exactly what you saw Bubba Wallace do right there, it, the car doesn't want to be on one or the other. It wants to be on one or the other, not splitting. You can see that transition to that flat apron, and then we've got that box lit up with the cone. Yeah. These drivers don't have that luxury. It's just an orange box that's painted on the racetrack or uh, on the apron. But it's the location. Again, you got to think your tires are completely wore out. Your brakes are hot. You're now you're asking way more out of them than you felt in the last 20, 30, 50 laps, right? Now you get down in there and it's you can't get stopped. You lock the tires up and slide through. We mentioned Brad Keselowski locking him up coming on the pit road. We'll show you that. 99 laps to go in Richmond. Denny Hamlin out in front of Joey Logano by two seconds.
The impact of the pandemic on youth sports has been significant. Learn how you can help Fox Sports and Good Sports restore play for at-risk youth and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Visit GoodSports.org. <laughs> 91 laps to go in Richmond and Martin Truex did not go a lap down. Serving his penalty coming down pit road came out in front of his Joe Gibbs teammate Denny Hamlin and has stayed there last car on the lead lap in 12. Well how many times have we talked about you can you can make small mistakes early in a race but when you get down to that final stage you know 90 laps to go you just cannot afford yeah. to have those kinds of mistakes well happen. you're just going to have to be lucky with ca cautions or something like that afford you the opportunity to dig yourself out of it but yeah you're right timing is definitely not on their side let's have a look at our USAA biggest movers since the restart Alex Bowman up four spots Kyle Larson two laps down up three uh, Daniel Suarez has picked up a couple so is Cole Custer and Christopher Bell again digging yourself out of a hole the 48 of Alex Bowman still paying the price of that pit road penalty you know slowly but surely and, and probably a top five car Tyler Reddick goes two laps down to Denny Hamlin. I'm noticing more over today than, than I've I've felt that I that I experience on this racetrack Jeff is is not being able to find much grip up high usually I use and you heard me talk about that earlier that those hashes right there if you put your right sides right on them you could kind of find some grip right there and usually pull be able to pull uh, the wheel back down get straight up off maybe so you can put the throttle down on both ends of the racetrack actually you don't see a lot of that today. yeah in my experience is when you see that working it's usually a tire that lays a lot of rubber down in the groove and so you can start finding a little bit of, of uh, fresher pavement yeah. as you move up the racetrack and find a little grip for a short period of time and we're just not seeing a lot of rubber being it's, laid down. On it is track. interesting. It doesn't even from from here. It doesn't even look like a lap's been ran on it. Tell you what, um, could get interesting here. You know, as we keep going, Kyle Busch has been consistently in our third in third place, putting some of the best laps together the last several laps. I know Denny's. Travel, um, working his way through a little bit of lap traffic, but um, if, if Kyle Busch can close that gap, I, I really think he's got something for our leader right now. Well, that's the thing that's so unique about him. Most drivers can't take that negative energy that we heard earlier in the race and stay with it and, and turn it into to something at the end. It just usually snowballs and it's and, and keeps getting worse and worse. He is the exception to that rule. No, no doubt about it. He almost thrives on it. And, and you know, every time I'm, I'm like, why, man? Why put yourself in that position? <laughs> you know, what, 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 how is that productive? But yet, for whatever reason, it seems to motivate him and, and work very well. Fourth place, Christopher Bell passing Kevin Harvick. And behind him, Brad Keselowski, one of two drivers who would love to see the caution because he would be the free pass car, the other uh, as you've mentioned is Martin Truex who's running near the tail end of the lead lap. I tell you what shows you the strengths in these Gibbs cars had that 19 not have had the trouble on pit road that would have been four out of the top five all four of them being in the top five pretty strong. Mm -hmm. And Mike I went back and looked at Martin Truex Jr. when he served his pass through penalty when he came back off of pit road. I mean it was right in front of Denny Hamlin but now he's actually pulled away from the 11 car a little bit. So in, yeah, let's take a look at that. There's Martin Truex serving the penalty uh, for too fast entering pit road. That agonizing oh. drive down pit road at pit road speed. Oh, and look, Man, he's right, right there. there. 
And you did a good job. Did you hear how he shifted to third gear real early right there to keep him spinning the tires? I was a little surprised by that. I almost it, thought it was too early. But it worked. It, you could hear it. The tires didn't spin any at all. He was able to keep his speed up and momentum and got out in front of the leader. And he is no longer the last car on the lead lap. That would be Chase Elliott in 12th. So Martin has a little bit of a cushion between himself and Denny Hamlin. As we see how this plays out. Oh boy, oh. fellas. <laughs> Next week, going to the big track. That is the Dega. big track. Action track, baby. Now you talk about un unpredictable seasons and <laughs> and winners. You try Man. to predict Talladega, Woo. give up. I you mean, never just, know what's going to happen. Just draw a name out of the hat. <laughs> Eric Almarola, Ricky Stenhouse. Just pick one. All right. Well, Not one of the usual there's suspects. There's no question that you got to have a fast hot ride. There's no question that you have to have, you know, make good moves, have good communication with you and your spotter. But you still got to have some luck. There's going to be a wreck, and you've got to be able to get through it, have it in your rear view, or be able to navigate through it. I want to know how the odds makers come up with odds for that race. And you know what? They do a pretty darn good job. <laughs> Hamlin and three wide traffic down in turn one. And Sorts itself out there with Alfredo. Place, and Logano, yeah, right there. Traffic has, has gained on Denny Hamlin. Logano now just half a second back. There he is. 76 laps to go. We'll have Larry's trends of the race right after this. Sixty nine laps to go in Richmond. Here's your progressive race summary as you watch the battle for the lead unfold right here. Denny Hamlin has led the most laps one hundred ninety five today. Five different leaders including Joey Logano who's going for it right here. Thirteen lead changes eleven cars on the lead lap. Four caution flags. What can we expect Larry. Well maybe this will work like it did at Martinsville last Sunday but I went back and looked at the last seven Richmond races spring and fall it's since we've been doing stage racing the last caution 
300 lap 329, 70, 71 laps to go. But three times in the last 25 laps, two overtime finishes. I think we got the verge of a lead change, though. <laughs> Almost. Jamie. This update, Denny Hamlin. He said he has a right rear shake like a wheel hop into three. Other than that, he hasn't said much. Remember, they took an aggressive approach last week. They're doing it today to try to hook up the corner, and it is paying off. 276 laps led last week, 197 today. Lead change, Regan. Well, you see the battle for the lead right here as Joey Logano is going past Denny Hamlin currently. They made an adjustment on that car in the last run specifically to make it better on the long run. Clearly, that is working right now. Mike? Ryan Priest trying to get one of his laps back. Now four down after being five. And Logano now on point trying to pull away. Oh, man, I'm so impressed with what Joey Logano and Paul Wolf have done to this 22 Ford. I mean, that thing was a great short run car throughout this race, but now he's got the long run speed. I wonder, is it the adjustment or just Denny Hamlin's problem causing him to lose some speed? 65 to go. Watch from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Drive always discovers possibility. Goodyear, more driven. And just like we saw last week, this track's changing too. A lot of cloud cover right now. It's cooling off. You know, you, you're getting up there on time. Everything's changing right now, and that could be playing right in the 22's favor. You know what, guys? Speaking of Goodyear, the, the numbers say you pit between 50 to 55 to go to split this stage into thirds, but I feel like somebody's going to roll the dice and come here in the next few laps trying to get the jump with those four fresh Goodyear tires. Micah McDowell is in, though he is 28th, several laps down, fifth place battle. Well, what's interesting Bowman. about that, Larry, is our, you know, Denny Hamlin, who was our leader, he came a lap sooner than Logano. Logano stayed out one extra lap and has one lap fresher tires. I don't know how much of a, of a difference that made, but you would think if somebody's going to try to go after Logano, they're going to have to short pit to do it. Hey, and, and capitalize on them 11, 9, 11, 8 pit stops that we were seeing out of that 11 yeah. car. Of the lead lap cars, Truex was the last one to come in on the last cycle at lap 296. Well, remember, that's when he had to do his penalty. He, he had oh, actually pitted, right. I think he actually Thank pitted you, about the same lap as Logano. And tw 24 tried to uh, pit right there and miss pit road. Well, we, we talk about how had tough, to go back around. How big, tough big this entry is to make, especially under green with those hot old tires. And, and shooting yourself on the foot. Trying to do exactly what we were just talking about is capitalizing on, on making up some track position here. But you can see, just couldn't get it rolled up. Had to stay up on the racetrack, grab another gear and so get going. You really have two options there. Stay on the banking as long as possible, brake while the car's on the banking, and then turn left and get on pit road, or hit that apron early, get all four tires on the apron. Regan? Well, 24, William Byron finally makes it to his pit stall right there. A little mistake from that, from his perspective. Too loose on that race car. Biggest issue, continuing to fight that, but a solid run all day long. The 48 of Alex Bowman, his teammate, that race car right now is just a little bit too tight on the splitter at this moment. Chase Elliott, William Byron, and Christopher Bell in the pit lane, along with Kurt Busch, Matt Benedetto, and here comes Logano. Regan. The 20 car of Christopher Bell. That race car is way too loose on entry. He's been working with his brakes to try and fix that. Joey Logano, that last run, he was tighter through the middle, but he was so much better with his drive off. You saw the difference it made as he went up and took the lead. Brad Keselowski and Kevin Harvick in. So is Eric Almarola, Chris Buescher. De Benedetto down pit lane, Ryan Blaney, and here comes Denny Hamlin. Well, Denny did the exact opposite of what Logano did the last time he stayed out an extra lap. Jamie? Remember, Denny Ham Hamlin had that right rear shake like a wheel hop into three. He has two sets of tires sitting right now. This set will go on, and then they have that one extra if they need it. The caution comes out here in the closing laps. Oh, 18. That, that will be a penalty. He that got was, under the box, but he was going way, way too that fast. That was almost to put it out. Yeah. 
All right, here's Kyle Busch. You have to have all four tires inside the orange box, and nope. he doesn't do it. No, nope. that's going to be a penalty. But honestly, I think he was he was probably speeding too. But that's, and his but, black mark tells the story. But that's what I was talking about. To maximize your speed getting to pit road, you do it just like that out on the banking, and then try to slow the car down. He just couldn't get it slowed down fast enough. Truex pits from the lead. Jamie. Heck of a job by Martin Truex Jr. to stay on the lead lap after that last penalty. A four tire stop here for him. Hasn't said much on the radio about his car handling since the last stop. Kyle Busch has called for a commitment line violation. And he will have to do the, the uh, drive of shame down pit road. Man, an unfortunate timing on that, too. You just, you're going to have to hope. The only thing you can do is hope that a caution comes out. Well, right now, the first car one lap down is Ricky Stenhouse in 11th. And here comes Kyle to serve the penalty. Well, you got to give him credit for one thing. He was going yeah, for it. That's right. Had one chance to try to win it, and that was it. But still 54 laps to go, and a lot can happen. Unfortunately, he's going to go a lap down here. Here comes our leader, Joey Logano. It's going to be tough to make that up this stage of the race. And it's such a tough decision right there. As a race car, you know that Kyle Busch is going to be aggressive, ultra aggressive on something like that. But is the juice worth the squeeze? And I was always conservative on these green flag pit stops like that because I didn't want to get on that radio and tell them guys, man, I'm sorry. I knew better. Now, don't return all the presents just yet. Kyle is in the free pass position. If we get a caution, he's right back on the lead lap. If. Well, if it's a, if ifs and nuts. How well, that but go? it goes back to the conversation of of you know being aggressive and, and when to be aggressive and when not to and it's such a, a fine line it's particularly on these green flag pit stops and it's done it's not just on the driver by the way right. it's those guys doing the pit stops and everything else they call it the money stop for a reason and it's got to be on point if you want the money Ricky Stenhouse has made his pit stop so he's now no longer in the free pass spot Kyle Busch is with 50 to go. Sunday on Fox, we all head for the fastest speedway on earth. That's Talladega Super Speedway. Race day coverage for the Geico 500 begins at 12.30 Eastern on FS1, continues at 1.30 Eastern on Fox, and the Fox Sports app. Let's have a look at our lead lap cars. Joey Logano has been out in front five times. Total of only 18 laps so far, but right now he maintains a one second lead. Denny Hamlin here, in second place, put down the fastest laps of anybody on the track right now, trying to run down our leader, Joey Logano. Christopher Bell in third. He is 12 seconds back. And Alex Bowman finds himself in fourth place after uh, an up and down day. There, there it shows you right there that graph. <laughs> it's definitely been an up and down day but great fight here putting it all together at the end of this race for Alex Bowman. Tell you what, Harv, man, this guy, e even when they're struggling a little bit, they just find a way to get themselves in the top five. Shows you how much depth he has in oh, his yeah. driving and this team has. Champion. Three-time Richmond winner. And I thought those glasses were for the dirt track. He's, he's running them every weekend, Kevin Harvick. And how about William Byron here? Had that issue come to pit road, but nice recovery. Sixth place. 
Eric, and, and such a, a needed well run right here. Needs a top 10, start the momentum back. Certainly has it going on right here. Martin Truex has recovered from this speeding penalty, but finds himself in eighth, 22 seconds back. His lap times are a tenth and a half quicker than Joey Logano, but he's got a lot of distance to make up. And how about Matty D? Another guy we talked about, Amarola, needing a good run. They've had a rough, rough start to this season. Solid day for Wood Brothers in this 21 car. And we're right back around to your leader, Joey Logano. Working hard to put uh, Ryan Newman. But Denny Hamlin. This battle is heated yes, up. Yes, it is. Hamlin is right there for the lead with 42 laps to go, and you'll see it all as we take you Fox side by side. Six laps to go. Joey Logano out in front of Denny Hamlin by three quarters of a second. Christopher Bell another 12 seconds back. Martin Truex, who with Hamlin have each led a quarter or more of this race. Hamlin's led half of it, recovering from a speeding penalty and back in eighth place. They nine cars still on the lead lap. The last time Hamlin led this many laps at Richmond, he went to victory lane, something he has not been able to do this season. In fact, he is tied for the record for top five finishes without a win in the first eight races of a season with Darrell Waltrip and Benny Parsons. Pretty good company right there, that but this good. has got to be wearing on him. This is at home. This is a win. Had three of them, and it's right there in front of you. I mean, that's a bad, uh, that's a good problem to have right there. Your yeah. worst finish so far this season, 11th. I mean, the consistency is there, but Denny Hamlin's got to be asking himself, what do we have to do to get this thing to Victor Lane? I, I heard him after Martinsville say, hey, we know how to finish third. We've got that part yeah. figured out. We got to figure out how to get to second, how to get to first. Well, today, it looked like he was getting himself to first. Now maybe he's just going to get himself to second. We'll see what happens. He's closing 30. Tell you what, you take that pit stop back from the 48 
give them that opportunity. These guys are extremely fast right now when the time's right. If he would have had the track position and it's still not over, right, there could be something happen. One of the fastest cars on the racetrack, Alex Bowman. Oh, rolling pretty oh good. That's what you got to do. Oh, exactly right. Try to, and I've always, again, talked about it last week. It's that 5 8 mark in the race race. See right here, going to get to the gas, try to beat him up off. One of the things I'm noticing, every time Logano catches a lap car, and listen, the 21 of Benedetto, he's in ninth place right now, so he's no slouch. But as Logano has caught him, it has brought his car to a halt. And you can see Joey getting loose right there. He was a little bit loose in right there. You saw him get loose off of turn four, overdriving a corner a little bit, looking in that mirror, seeing where he's at, starting to wash up. Can't wait to see how these two race the one another for this win. A little history there. And look at that. Joey won't have to see him in the mirror. He's going to feel him here in a second. Well, but Joey's just a smart race car driver. He's putting him where he wants him. He knows if he can stay right there on the outside, take that line away from him, especially on the exit. He's going to have to stay right on his door on exit. Well, and also what this does, it just makes Denny Hamlin use up those tires, That's overheat those tires, and, and maybe takes away that advantage he has on Joey Logano right, right now. So and does Hamlin wait until they clear De Benedetto? You can see to go after him again. Having a lot oh, of no. trouble right there in, his, in the middle of the corner, rolling, starting to diamond a little bit, right here, missed it again. Mike, I think you got to pounce while while you've got the opportunity, and he sees that Joey Logano struggled to get by Matt De Benedetto, and so that's right now why Denny is going to try to be in his mirror, try to get to the outside, the inside, just really just just be a pain in his butt because that's maybe what's going to cause him to make a mistake and get Denny Hamlin by. But it's the momentum and, I, and it's the bubble almost like you, you hear him talk about on a mile and a half. You get there, you can run him down, you're rolling better than them. Man, I tell you what, he's rolling the middle so much better. But it's very hard to continue that momentum and go on. All right, here's Chris Lambert, Denny Hamlin spotter. <laughs> and that's being that pain in the butt you talked about. <laughs> keep that pressure on him. Make him overdrive that corner because he's got to try to keep you behind him. And that's exactly what happens. And he keeps that up. It's going to continue to get tighter and tighter and tighter. But that, that was a good observation, too, about looking at the brake temperature and what, what, you know, Joey Logano is doing to run some of the lap times and what that might be doing to his tires in this race car. But if he can continue to stay right there where he is and take that racetrack away, take the exit away from him and that opportunity, it's doing exactly what you said, Jeff. It's making, oh, him, it's <laughs> use the front bumper. making him use that front <laughs> wheel and the brakes himself. Moving day. <laughs> money, money time. We've seen some good bump and runs and a little bit of uh, what is, is it Mike bump and dump. <laughs> oh you wouldn't here, see that here at Richmond. No. <laughs> but guys I've been seeing this the entire race with Denny Hamlin at 11. He uses the brakes hard but he uses it a short amount of time gets off of it. So what that tells me Larry is his car's really working well. It's a neutral it's balanced out in the middle of the corner. <laughs> I like that look at that come on man. Wasn't we'll see him in the lead, but that's he's able to roll the corner, and it's so hard to do. If your hot rod's doing that, you can get off the brake, roll the middle. If not, you got to stay on them brakes and keep the front end turning. Wasn't it just a couple of races ago that Denny was mad at himself for not using the bumper we'll see and right taking there. advantage? Uh, I don't think if this thing gets down to the last few laps, he will not hesitate. At home? <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Easy to apologize later. Oh, boy, right there, Joey Logano was in the tire tracks of Matt Benedetto, And both of those cars were sliding, getting into the corner. Logano slices through, makes quick work of the 21. This is that bubble that I was telling you, though. Something about this racetrack. I remember a few years back, I was one of the fastest cars on the track, got to Martin Truex Jr. way faster than him. As soon as I got to him, couldn't do anything with him. That's what you're seeing right here. Tell you what, Joey's pushing hard right yeah, there. Yeah, you see the back end step mm -hmm. out a little bit, getting into the corner. 20 to go this time. Denny's cars hooked up. Definitely. Oh, hard, 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 in the wall. hard in the wall between turns one and two. 
And I believe the right rear is off the car. Well, yeah, you can see the tires off the wheel. Tire, yeah. Maybe some fender damage cut that right rear down. Who knows? We'll have to go back and let. No, no, fender damage. Yeah, it does look like he scraped the wall. Sixth caution of the day. But at clearly, lap 381 it, for Harvick. Pretty clear that the right rear tire went down and that car spun around in a hurry. Kevin was running eighth when this happened. Just past the start finish line going into turn one. Boy, yeah, that's like the worst place. Yeah, that right rear tire just went down. That's an odd situation that far into a run to see a right rear tire go down like that. I just wonder, Clint, were they maybe putting a lot of heat into that right rear and, and it was potentially a, like a melted bead or something? Yeah, it's just hard to tell. I, I don't know. It seemed like, you know, there's no fender damage. So obviously that's that's always the given that cuts those tires down where, you know, scrape the wall or something like that. You see it time and time again. That was just a weird. It could have just let out run over something, had a flat. I mean, that happens. Boys, Kyle Busch got the free pass. Yes, he did. So that puts him back in play in eighth place. We will restart with eight cars on the lead lap. How many times you get a free pass and still in the top ten? <laughs> still got a chance, boys. Well, let me tell you who's going to have a chance here. Is that 11 team that has been so strong all day long, making four tire stops for Denny Hamlin? This is where you need absolutely your best. Remember earlier in the pre-race show, we talked about the best on pit road through eight races, the driver getting in and out of the pit box. Denny Hamlin ranked number one. Then the crew, Alex Bowman up there first with that 48 crew, Denny Hamlin's 11 crew three, but when you combine the two together, look who's on top and you know what? They have kind of backed that up all day long. Denny Hamlin, that 11 team. Regan. Joey Logano, that run, he couldn't get the car to turn as good as he wanted to at the end of it. Needs an adjustment for that, as you saw him running a little high. Alex Bowman in the 48. That race car took off better this last run. He wants it to take off a little better now. Jamie? No pressure on these 11 boys. All that talking about how good they have been this year, and especially today. The last set of sticker tires on. Good stuff as they celebrate as their 11 Beat driver. Woo. Here it is, the race off pit road, and that's how close it is. And that's how you stay ranked number one. Heck yeah. Good job, guys, and thank you. But just remember, though, that 22 is good on the short runs. So you know he's going to be super aggressive trying to get this lead back. Here's another look at Denny's pit stop. What's especially good here is you know this is the last stop of the day mm -hmm. right here. So you've got to get all those lug nuts on because they count them at the end of the race and there's fines and penalties. If not, you're not going to leave here with three on. <laughs> hey, on this I don't stop. know. What's the no, fine? you're not. I want to know what the fine is. Might be worth it. There's, oh. there, there's the difference, right? The one pit crew's high five and the other pit crew's hanging their head. Don't give up on this man just yet. Joey Logano is one of the most aggressive drivers there is on restarts, and he's had short run speed the whole time. Another 11 yeah, second but, but pit look, stop. Yeah, but 12 2 on Logano. That was not bad at I'd all. I'd like to have a 12 2 pit stop and get beat off the pit Hamlin, road. Hamlin, two tenths quicker on the track, three tenths quicker. The pit crew, race leader, with 16 to go. But very important to still keep in mind your roll times. You're in the pit box, your exit of pit box as a driver. You know, you hold a little bit of, of uh, you know, overall outcome of, of that performance on pit road as well. So, you know, you've, you've got to when you get back Monday, you're going to go to that competition meeting and really dissect the whole overall outcome of the pit stop. Pit stall location too plays into that. Yeah, that too. 
Hamlin trying to win his manufacturer's namesake race, the Toyota Owners 400. Logano trying to win on Mustang Day, the anniversary of the Mustang's launch in 1964. Alex Bowman just trying to win for the bow tie brigade. You just said it. You took the words right out of my mouth. I said it just a little bit ago. This 48 car is one of the fastest cars on the track. You give him the opportunity to some track position and new life. Might be my guy right here. Kevin Harvick now two laps down after bringing out that caution. Give up the front row and the final restart, right? Yeah, you don't want to be behind them, right? Not really, no. <laughs> yeah, I think you do what we talked about earlier. Just, you know the deal. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Denny Hamlin will take that outside lane like he has on previous restarts. It's worked so well for him all day. So opens and up the door for Joey Logano to, to decide with that choose zone of whether he wants to be in that outside lane on the rear bumper of Denny Hamlin or the inside. I just don't know if you can give up that front row. No, and again, you look over your shoulder and look at that 48 car starting right there in third. These guys get together the least little bit. If the Joey can get door to door with them, gets loose, that's all it'll take. 25 drivers took the wave around. Some of them, uh, like DiBenedetto, Dylan, Elliott, Keslowski, Kurt Busch, Blaney, Chastain, Suarez, or uh, no, down to Blaney in 14th, will get back on the lead lap. So here they come to the choose zone. This should be very interesting. Be 12 to go when they restart. Oh, Denny's going to the inside this time. We're just making sure you don't run over the corner. Switching it up. Check up here to four pretty good. Checking up. 51 Does that surprise you, Jeff? It did because he's been in the outside lane and has made it work just about every time he's been out there. Well, but he's also had the benefit of his teammate underneath of him that probably That's more true. than likely. And maybe that played him. a role. And yeah. also, you know, he's he's racing Logano, a different competitor right now. Now you got to make sure you got these tires warmed up. Remember, start of this race, spun his tires really, really hard, lost a lot of positions right off the bat. Yeah, not a lot of rubber on this racetrack. A lot of drivers have had trouble with wheel spin on restarts. So what's what do you guys think? You think this is the last caution? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, coming green this time. Hamlin, Logano, Bowman and Bell behind him. Al Marola in fifth, Byron sixth, Truex up to seventh. Here we go. Got a great jump right there, needed it. 22 drove it really hard into the corner. I said it, this 48, I'm telling, he had one of the fastest cars on the racetrack, lap time wise, in this last run. Here he comes. Boy, look at the inside. launch up off the corner. He's going to oh, get to the got inside. A coming. Denny. We talked about the 22 having great short run speed. Alex Bowman with some great short run speed. Getting door to door with him is one thing. Needing to clear him. Oh, he got a little loose in. <laughs> and then look, we've talked about this 10 card needing to win. These guys get together, open the door up for him to win. I think I've done that before. 10 to go. That's going to give the lead right there to Bowman. Clear. How about that? Bowman and Al Marola making a show of this. Tell you what, HMS has not been to Victory Lane since 2008. I think Alex Bowman was, what, about 15, 15. years old? Yes, the last time a Hendrick car won at Richmond. Hell, the last time they won here, I had hair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen a race like this. All those guys that took that wave around, you've got, what, these top 10, 12 cars that are all in a bunch, and then the rest of the pack is clearing the other side of the racetrack with those old tires. How about Alex Bowman driving away from Denny Hamlin right now with eight to go. Christopher Bell inside Almarola. This will be for fourth place. Told you he was bad fast. He is driving off. Got a little loose right there underneath of him. Amarole, <laughs> with everything that's happened to him this season, he's just like, can we please just get the checkered yeah. flag out so this right. thing can be over? 
I'll tell you, great race though for uh, for Eric. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And here's Martin Truex about to bust back into the top five after overcoming a pit road penalty. Wow, you talk about surprise endings. This well, is one of them. And with these short tracks, you know, new tires, new short run speed versus long run speed, but you get a late caution like this on the short track, you just cannot predict it. Kind of like our season's been this year. Oh, absolutely. We said, we told y'all it was going to be the best season ever. It's so unpredictable. These guys, they are racing hard. Now this is right about that time when Denny Hamlin's car starts to to typically come to him after those air pressures get built up. Be curious to see if he can close that gap at all on our leader Alex Bowman. That thing is just so hooked up though. I say no. There is no way. 48 is stuck like glue right around the bottom. Watch him match lap times that time. And He's the able lap to before. arc it. Big time arc getting in. Run really straight and, and car hard. Was, uh, car was brushed the wall in two. That's Cody Ware slow into turn three, but way up high and out of the way. So we should be okay. If you're Denny, how sick are you right now watching that car in front of you again, watching, thinking one, how did this get slipped by through our fingertips? After winning the first two stages, the last couple of times he's done that, Kyle Bush ended up in victory lane here. You saw Alex Bowman, he got up Missed off the right bottom there, just yeah. a little bit. Denny's going to take advantage of it, launch up off the corner. Almost a tenth and of a second slower. right there. Now he's got traffic. Whoa, now he's got one guy. Woo. Whoa. Gonna need some better help, Spotter. Get these guys out of my way. A knot of lap traffic right in front of Bowman. Here he comes to the white flag. One to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. White flag, you're all good. Inside of Davidson and clear, but they're double wide in front of the leader. Oh, man. That's the last thing. With Alex Kevin Bowman Harvick and see. Sparks flying, he got out of the way here. And he splits those lap cars. Harvick backs out, gets out of the way. Hamlin comes to within two car lengths. Final corner of 400 laps. Alex Bowman steals one in Richmond. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man, great guys. Greg Crew chief of the 48 is pumped. Look at that team. They rebounded from a pit road penalty <laughs> at lap 240. <laughs> I can't to believe. To score his third career win. And Denny Hamlin's that's sick got a to cut his stomach deep right there. At home, had it. I can't believe we just did that at Richmond. Oh my God. I believe it, buddy. You did it. They did it. Bounce back from a mistake. But you called it, Clint. You you noticed how fast that race car was. Yeah. If he got a shot to, to be up there with the leaders, I didn't know he had that kind of short run speed, but he showed that he did. Bowman the showman brings the 48 to victory lane for the first time since Dover in 2017. First, first time that? Ally has gone to victory lane. Burn it down, buddy. And you... another different winner. Boyer, we're going for 16. I think by the end of the regular season, <laughs> we, we may be well have it. with you over that. <laughs> <laughs> you may be right. Turns out he's pretty or smart. Or I may be crazy, but no, it sure is fun to watch. It's like you pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Struggling that he's category. He's been doing this for a long time. He's seen it all. <laughs> Poor that Denny. What a heartbreaker. Yeah, yeah, get over it. Nobody likes us anyway. Yep. Now he's critiquing his burnout, man. <laughs> I, do whatever you want. But another top five for Denny Hamlin. Uh, they said he's so far out in front of the points he could take a race off, but top ten that is little consolation. Matt De Benedetto, great run. Eric Almirola, those both of those guys, top ten runs, needed yeah. it. Almirola Austin sixth, Dillon. and De Benedetto ninth. Their first top tens of the season. Jamie's with our winner. Well, last week, Alex Bowman was one of the fastest cars, and it ended in heartbreak for you guys. You come back, 
and you seal the deal today after overcoming a pit road penalty. How did you guys overcome that? Race car, as, as simple as that. Greg Ives and all the guys, they got to deal with me at short tracks, and I drive these places really wrong. And, um, you know, we kind of, instead of trying to make me figure it out, went to work on getting the race car to where I needed to be. And Greg has done such an amazing job at, at making that happen. So uh, first and foremost, got to thank Ally and Chevrolet, everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, this one's for Rowdy and his family. Um, miss him and Blakely every day, but just uh, means the world to be able to win for Ally. And it's definitely emotional, obviously, with uh, how hard the offseason was on us. So appreciative for the opportunity, and uh, we got more races to win this year. He's talking about his pit crew member that lost his life in the offseason. Let's go back to the the end of this race though you're battling two guys that combined have won it five times what was going through your mind at that moment <sighs> to be honest with you we were terrible on short runs so we restarted third and I'm like man if we get out of here with a, a solid top five we'll be good um, you know overcome a lot today and I don't know if Greg pumped the pressures way up or what he did but that's more grip than I've ever had in a race car at Richmond and um, it worked out really well so getting a race a guy like Denny at a place like this is really cool um, feel like we race each other really clean so appreciative of that and uh, means a lot all right I heard it's beers at your house tonight congratulations Alex <laughs> Bowman beers. wins for the third time in his career well the other side to that battle the second place finisher Denny Hamlin Denny such a strong race car all day long what did you need a little more of at the end there yeah, we just uh, didn't take off quite as good um, there at the end. Uh, tried to warm it up and do everything I could. Just uh, 48 had more more grip there for a few laps, and uh, you know I couldn't hold the bottom. And you know, once he got position, you know we just got shoved out there. So it's just like uh, great great job by the you know this FedEx Ground team. We're first and foremost want to think of all the families in Indy right now. Um, awful tragedy that happened there. So our thoughts and prayers are with these names uh, on this hat. So uh, we'll, we'll get them. We'll just keep, we'll keep digging. Um, you know, we're, we're dominating. Just gotta, just gotta finish it. Thanks, Denny. Yep.